Welcome to Legends of Avantress. <laughs> it's a Friday the 13th, and we are here with the Curses for Donnie One Show. Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! We did it. Uh, I would not like to live deliciously. <laughs> I've got goat hair in my nostrils. Yeah, that felt pretty spooky. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, that felt good. Did it, did, did it, was it good? Yeah, was it good for you? Yeah. Was, it, was, was it good for you? Yeah. It was good for us. Yeah, it was good for uh, us. I've got goat all over my books. <laughs> it was pretty decent. We are playing our characters from Curse of Stradania with a couple of additions uh, from other campaigns. Ooh. But the, the extra special part of tonight is that we are all playing the Crooked Moon subclass. Oh. 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 See them uh, rotating on screen uh. above, below, around, left, right, center. Uh, you will see the subclass names there. <laughs> we also have slides that show what we're doing, some names of some of the subclass features. Uh, but what I'd like you all to remember as is that this is beta. This is early beta. Uh, things this will change. This is alpha. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, is alpha. Give, this, is, this is Zeta. It's like, we'll, it's call like... It, we'll call it between alpha and beta. Uh, names of features may change. Uh, things will be adjusted. Uh, I am very proud of the work that Derek and I have done thus far. Um, but, you know, don't be surprised if there are some things that are OP broken, mm -hmm. some things that might not be up to, <laughs> up to where we want them to be. Um, but the beauty of this is that we're one step closer to getting uh, playtesting ready for backers, which is going to be a lot of fun when we get there. So, I can't wait to cast the third level spell, stop. win D&D. &D. Yeah. <laughs> you win the third level? Um, wow. And make sure you go check out thecrookedmoon.com today to support our very first Kickstarter. Thank you. Mm. I don't know what to say. Uh, it's Friday the 13th. <laughs> Ooh, this ain't, this is spooky, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Roll that beautiful creep footage. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Creepy crawlers! There you go! For me, there were me, the purple I and green. I got nothing else. Just roll it. <laughs> from the sky Leafy sighs Creaking bones Pray you don't get found alone Crickly crack the branches pop It grows the night that never stops The tree that leans with twisted grin Her limbs are thrown, her soul is sin Underneath the crooked moon Stalks the king of cloven hoof In pale decay and empty gloom He comes for you Delicious heat is cold He carries six Of sword and seal Once wayward souls the fallen kneel Me too. 
you have all known each other for a long time. <laughs> many, many years. Good to know. You came together through one particular individual, Professor Clayton Azran. That's right. His intelligence and his curiosity led him all over the world of Evandris, looking for new artifacts, cracking open mysteries, seeking the unknown, believing he could solve any puzzle and find any answer. And it is through this work that over the years, one after another, he picked up each of you. For the past few years, you have been working together as a band of glorified monster hunters. People from all over Avantris call on you at Miss Tallery University to come to their homes, their libraries, their cemeteries, to ward off evil spirits, to cure curses, to discover the secrets that lie beneath. And it is for this reason that you find yourselves in a rickety black carriage as it rocks down a cobbled street leading you out of Brig and into the unknown. For about a week prior, you received a letter. More specifically, Victoria received a letter. There was something in this letter that intrigued Professor Azran, and you all decided that you were going to agree to the terms and meet with one Shradanya von Zarovich. The letter read, My dearest Victoria, it is with a heavy heart that I send this letter. Though you may not know me, I surely know you. I regret to inform you that your aunt, your mother's sister, and my dear wife has passed on from this world. It has been nigh on a year since your aunt Rowan passed, and I send my deepest apologies for not writing to you sooner. I have been overcome with grief and have only recently found myself again. I write to you not only to inform you of her passing, but to invite you to a celebration in her honor. This time of year was always her favorite, and the yearly harvest festival was something she took great pride in. This year, the festival, the festival will be bigger and better than ever, in honor of my dear sweet Rowan. I know you would have loved, I know she would have loved to meet you, and it would honor her memory to have you here. <coughs> but lastly, for my selfish request, I know that you have found yourself in the company of those that seek out and uncover the truth and mystery. There are suspicious details about my wife's passing centered around an artifact that was unearthed in an ancient barrow, in, in an ancient barrows. In honoring the memory of kin, if, if honoring the men memory of kin is not enough to entice you, then maybe a full purse of coin and a bit of intrigue is enough to convince you to come to my aid. I shall send a carriage to deliver you to my home, Ravenscroft Manor, in the town of Duskvale. I do hope you will accept my invitation. I look forward to meeting you all. Most gratefully and faithfully yours, Stradanya von Zarovich. And it is in that very carriage that you find yourselves now. Upon entering it, you noticed that it was not driven by a man or anything at all. The seat was left completely empty, and yet the reins were taut and the, horse, the horses, the two black mares, were under control. You were able to step inside. The plush red velvet um, seating was um, beautiful and, and comfortable and cozy. The interior was warm and safe. A platter of delicacies was laid out for you, steaming mugs of a sweet um, rose and blood orange tea, uh, piping hot next to uh, biscuits and, and cookies of all kind, um, and an invitation to her home. And that is where you find yourself now, rocking down the road, leave, leading, leaving Brig, not knowing how long the journey will take you or where exactly it's taking you to. Clayton spent the better part of the week trying to uncover anything he could find about uh, Dusk... Why can I not remember the name? Duskvale, Duskvale. right? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Duskvale. That, that, that's the problem. That's popping Duskvale. into my head. I can't wait to go to Duskvale. Duskvale. Um, <laughs> as well as um, anyone named Stradanya von Zarovich. But to his chagrin, he is unable to find anything at all about this place. But that artifact found in an ancient barrow, 
that led to suspicious circumstances in the death of someone close to Victoria. Now that's interesting. That's something worth investigating. And that is where you find yourselves now. Mm. Poor Aunt Rowan. I have to say, I'm not totally comfortable with you reading my mail, but <laughs> I suppose it's a good thing we are going to go. We all, all read same. your letter. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, with my... I read it twice. <laughs> with my supreme divination abilities, I could just tell that it was somewhat relevant to our purposes. Isn't that right, Mysterium Incorporated? Miss Isaacs, let me start by saying I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. But more importantly, did anybody see any rum? I'd even settle for some whiskey. Uh, there's alcohol. Thank you, and I help myself. It's a nice spiced rum. It oh. would be quite a long ride. Are you sure you want to dive in so early? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Indulge in the poison of the body as you do the poison of the mind, Shepard. Uh, you call it poison, I call it the antidote. Well, I mean, what we have to understand is that we're on a spooky, spooky stagecoach with no driver. We don't really know the destination, how long it will take. It could take maybe several hours or several weeks. It is quite comfortable in here. I think they've appointed us very well. Well, my first question was going to be, how far is it? <laughs> but there's all this food and uh, pastries, muffins, uh, uh, rum. We're, we're going to be fine. Cheers. You bring a good point, though. How far is it? <laughs> You're, you, have no, you have no idea how long it will take you. Uh, Clayton spent the better part of a week trying to discover where this place was, and you could find nothing. There is no information on this place. Yes, it's quite curious. This None, Professor? Veil of Dusk. Uh, I, oh, I could not <laughs> define this location with my green dreams. Sorry, sorry, Nick. Feeling all oh, the woods speak to me. Uh, Y'all, you sure you're all right? I think he's having an episode. Yeah, that's one word for it. <clears throat> Fetch a piece of leather for him to bite down on in case he needs it. Oh, okay, one moment. The old gods... Muffins. Muffin. ...are uneasy the deeper we tread into the strange land of... Uh... I mean, come on, Sarnax. Look, we're looking for something. We're looking for, for people. And at the end of the day, it sounds like there might even be some uh, treasure, artifacts involved, nice little payday. Come on, what do you think, Professor? Well, that is precisely what I plan to investigate. It is just pure convenience that Victoria has a familial tie to this. Roll a constitution uh, saving throw for me, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm also going to investigate the treasures and artifacts. I'm right there with you, Professor. Uh, did you say constitution? I did. Oh, fuck. It's this paper thing. <laughs> uh, you're, you're wearing, you're looking over the glasses. Oh, you get you plus do, four. You, 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 plus you do this four. every time you look over the glasses. These are going to magnify the vision. <laughs> they look cool, damn it. Uh, <laughs> oh, professor. 18. How many dreads do I have? Oh. You have one. Okay, I'm not going to use it. Not for that. <laughs> not for that. <laughs> wait, wait, hold um, on. Okay. What is this? What, what is 1143? Is that two dreads? No. No. It's 13. Oh, I think you just have one. You, might not, you actually might not even have one. <laughs> <laughs> we well, have no that. dreads. We're gonna check. Oh, oh yeah. No, 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 that's Wait, not true. Hold on. We might have on. one. We might hold have on. one. Hold on. I got a message. Oh, we did the dread. Hold on. I got a message. I got a message. Everybody, just hold on. The mods are helping hold us. Hold on. Out. Thank you, mods. Thank you, mods. We yeah, couldn't yeah, do it without you. I think I was right, man. Uh, I'm two good. dreads. Oh, yes. We have two dreads, and we have twenty-one twists. Two Whoa. 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 Am I feeling faint? No. All right. Oh. What does it say? What does what say? Weren't you reading, some, re reading something to us just now? No, he was just rather inappropriately saying that it was convenient that my dear Aunt Rowan has passed. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying it's convenient that she's dead. I'm just saying it's convenient that you're related to her. Mm. Victoria, weep not, for we all return to the soil and bring about new life. I suppose that is comforting on some level. Thank you, Sons. Death is required. Victoria. Yes, very good. It is a good thing your aunt is dead. 
All right, <laughs> Mr. Sonic, thank you. No, that's you're okay. very welcome. <laughs> I can reassure you again if you enjoy I'm hearing it. It is sure. a good thank thing you. your aunt is deceased. <laughs> She's returned to the soil, returned to the earth. Sorry. Consumed Please. by the roots of new life. For all the gods, someone <laughs> change I, the subject. I do not get you. I, I, you are quite the conundrum. Perhaps it is all of the time you spend with your cards and a dice. Maybe. And roulette wheels. Uh, yeah, well, I enjoy all of those things. And coins. You spend a good hour <laughs> riding out of Brig and into forests and over moors and deeper into the, the heart of Bargast, away from the port city. This is all familiar territory to you. You've traveled all over Vantress. There isn't a place here that wouldn't be familiar to you in some way at this point. And it is comforting and relaxing, and you all partake in food and drink. You enjoy conversations, the kind that really close friends tend to enjoy. You rib each other, but you all know that your hearts are in the right place. And it feels, it's almost too close to midnight. You feel like you, sh like you feel tired as if you've been up all day and all night, but you look outside and it's barely twilight. It's strange, this feeling of heaviness, this feeling of exhaustion that's overcome all of you, but you continue on. Tai Shen. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> your voice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Your <laughs> words. <laughs> okay. Your yeah. words sleep, yeah. Yeah. but your eyes are alive with the sounds of forests burning in a terrible forest fire. I'm not quite sure what that means. I think he's saying you need a drink, something to take the edge off. There's still a little rum left. No, no, there's still a little rum left if you want. That's shocking. Muddle the <laughs> mind and you muddle shepherd. your purpose. The tea is all that I drink. Is that why you're and so And there fit? is a beautiful rose and blood orange tea. How do you get these? The, the, the muscles on the side of the neck? I don't know, <laughs> it's just amazing. It's a lot of working out. <laughs> <sighs> Strapping, which is to pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least one of you has sense. I'll join you for some tea. There you are, Professor. Thank you. Mm. Good tea, this. Yes, quite. What blend do you reckon it is? <laughs> mm. Seems to be a rose and. Oh. Citrus of some sort. Oh, citrus. No, you're quite right. I was getting cinnamon, but you're the expert. You, you spill a bit of tea on yourself as you realize you oh. start to nod off as you're holding the mug in your hands. The hot tea um, <clears throat> seeping into your shirt uh, jolts you <clears throat> awake as you as you look around, um, not realizing um, or um, realizing that you had just dozed off a bit in the middle of this conversation. Mm. Oh. All of these beverages, and they did not consider providing egg yolks. Oh, no, they did. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Some good fucking food. What in the nine hells? Where'd you get an egg? <laughs> there was an entire basket of raw eggs in varying sizes. Did you bring that from home? <laughs> they provided it. They were incredibly thoughtful, unlike And as you're some speaking, of us. you begin to doze off, and mid-sentence you catch yourself falling asleep. <laughs> I crack all the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I feel we're all a bit road weary. I don't know, this feels like something else. <laughs> Professor, do you think that they put drugs in the... <laughs> and at that moment, you begin to fall asleep as well. Because that's very generous, drugs are expensive. <laughs> Oh, you guys are just a bunch of wusses. There's absolutely nothing. <laughs> and it is at that time that all 
of you fall asleep. <laughs> it's a peaceful, dreamless, dark sleep. You are lulled for moments, hours, days. It's hard to tell into this deep sleep by the soft rocking of the carriage on the road. And you eventually all come to, roughly around the same time. Suspiciously so. You notice that it is the dead of night. Darkness is just pooling outside the windows of the carriage. And as you look out, the first thing that strikes all of you is that this is unlike any forest you've ever seen before. This is unlike any place you've seen in Brieg. And you couldn't have been asleep that long. You weren't on a ship. It wouldn't be possible, or um, Bargast, it wouldn't be possible to be anywhere but Bargast. And yet, as you look out into the night sky, you feel in your heart of hearts that you're not in Bargast anymore. And you look up at the moon, and it seems different. It's soft milk light spills over the lands around you, and it's hard to really get a grasp of what this place truly looks like, but it's beautiful in its own way. The gnarled trees are large and tall. They reach out over the road, reach up towards the moon itself, almost as if they're grasping towards her, calling to her, praying to her. And the carriage continues to move along, rocking this way and that as it rides over the dirt pathway that leads you through these towering trees. The scent that hangs in the air is earthy. Sarnax, it speaks to you. This feels ancient. This feels old. It feels alive. This is the kind of forest you've been trying to tell your friends about. This is the kind of forest that speaks to your soul, and you are in it right now. The scent of the earth is delicious. The old ones sing of power no longer lost here. Civilization not tainting the old places, the dark places. What exactly does that mean, Sonax? Do you know where we are? Oh, my heavens. Did you hear that, Professor? Yes, yes. I've... Could it be what we think it might be? All I heard is that there's no chance of finding a gambling hall. Not likely out here. What I can deduce is that we have traversed through some kind of portal, either very far away or to another plane of existence entirely. But we are certainly not in Brieg any longer. Now we're never going to get to Duskville. Duskville. Duskville? Duskville. Duskvale. Duskvale. Don't worry, I can't remember it either. <laughs> I got it. Are you talking about ducks? I like it's ducks. not even close. This <laughs> is why you say things out loud over and over and over again. There's probably nothing interesting in a place called <laughs> Duskvale. <laughs> Maybe for you. Oh, well, that's fair. <laughs> Certainly no robots, lasers, or aeroplanes. <laughs> I don't say that. That is non-canon. <laughs> hey, well, this whole thing's non-canon, buddy. You <laughs> <laughs> looked at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the carriage hits a rock or a root and jolts forward for a second. You're all Goodness. jostled inside. Um, tea and and whiskey and rum and oh. cake spill and uh, clatter about about the interior of the carriage. It is um, a mess in here. As you all write yourselves, the lanterns that hang on the inside, that the oil lanterns that have been glowing bright dim for a moment, but then they increase and then dim again and stay softly lit. The darkness from the outside creeping in. And once again, you hear the howling of wolves off in the distance. It's not like the howling of wolves in Brieg. There's something different that resonates inside of their, their booming howls. Can't quite place what the difference is. Are, 
but it's it's uncanny. Just slightly off from what you would expect. You're right, Victoria. Could it be? I hate to get your hopes up, but it does seem like it could be. At first, I thought it was just wolves, but if it's werewolves, where wolves? No, no, werewolves. Oh, <laughs> werewolves. Like, yes. Yes. Yes, were is from an old Brieg word meaning man, man wolf. Oh, learn something new every day. Abominations, mockeries. Fascinating, all the same. I've been searching my whole life to see one in the flesh. The howling gets louder. You hear it on the right side and then almost echoes on the left. More than one? In front and then behind. It's hard to tell, is that is it one wolf and the noise is bouncing off of the trees? That's completely possible. Are there more than one wolf? Do werewolves hunt in packs? The moon is full and round and strange and not what you would expect. And you're, you're thinking of all of these things as the sounds are almost disorienting you, the way they bounce back and forth in this way and that, and then the carriage hits another rock or another root or was that something that hit the side of the carriage instead? You feel it rock to one side and you all hold on to each other and right yourselves as it rocks to the other side. It is very clear now that something is happening to this carriage, something you didn't expect until all of a sudden, the carriage completely slams to the side, slamming into the ground. All of you fly from your seats up um, into the ground. You're laying there splayed as the moon shines down almost in a pillar. Um, next, to you, you hear the winning of the horses as they break away from the carriage. It's dragged 20, 30 feet as the horses wrench themselves away from the carriage. You can hear them neighing in panic, in horror, as they run as they run off into the distance. The sounds of their hooves slowly getting softer and softer and softer as the moonlight shines down on you through the open window. You look up, and all you see is the window and the moon, and no sounds. The wolves, gone. Just nighttime insects. Oh my gosh. Oh God, get out of my way! I'm getting us, I'm getting out of here! Is everyone all right? Oh, oh my God! Uh, and I'm gonna like, push my way and climb up <laughs> to this window, not caring what's going on around me and attempt to see if I can get up, out, and through and see what's going on. There is no pane of glass on this window. You push the curtains aside as best you can and you begin to climb up out of the uh, the the side of this carriage. You see the, the wheels on this side spinning and spinning and spinning, but they're slowly getting slower and slower. You notice that there is a broken part of wheel off in front of you. Clearly, one of the wheels on the other side had snapped and the carriage had completely toppled. Um, roll an investigation check for me. Something tells me you will get your wish, Professor. Ooh, 19. You, at first, notice no difference. Or you, you notice nothing out of the ordinary. But as you begin climbing out and you find footing on the ground, you see that there are deep claw marks on the very front side of this carriage. In all of the, um, in all of the noise and um, commotion of being slammed against the side of this carriage as it slid across the, the ground being pulled by these horses, you must have missed the sound of whatever creature could have possibly done that, but you remember getting into the side of the carriage. There were no claw marks there, and these are deep deep gashes, as if something was trying to wrench its way inside. <clears throat> but look, all is oh, quiet now. Where could that creature have gone? I look very closely at these marks and I, I basically yell uh, out into back to the carriage as people are maybe <coughs> coming out and I say, uh, Hooray! Professor, you're gonna want to take a look at this. What do you see? Oh, what do you see? this is a mark of a big old beastie. Yes, yes, finally! But watch your elbow, Tai Shen. Oh, just, let me get oh, out. Excuse Sorry. me, ladies Sorry. first. Oh, no, oh, fine. You're right, you're right, you're right. Go ahead. Heavens, my petticoat. Oh. oh, there's my shoe. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Shepard, I hold out my hand <laughs> daintily for you to help me out. Uh, all right, come here. I'm gonna. I'll, Easy now. I'll, I'll help you out and then help set you down next to the. <clears throat> 
Thank you. E easy there, all right? You good? You all right? I am. My goodness, what could have done that? I don't know. Come on, gentlemen, get out of here. All right. Uh, help me out. Uh. All right. Come on, Professor. Come on. Shake a leg. No more dilly dally. Come on. <laughs> dilly dally. Also grab him by the waist. <laughs> you all, <laughs> you are all able to climb out. Um, Sarnax is lifted out in a similar way to Victoria. Uh, he is covered in eggs. Uh, oh, come on! But he doesn't Yo, seem to mind. Uh, as you all find your footing on the dirt in this strange land on this strange road, and you listen, what could have made that noise? But you hear nothing. These claw marks, these, these, I, oh, I want to very closely investigate the, uh, all of the damage to the, uh, Roll character. an investigation check. Fuck. 16. You, you take your glasses and you, uh, adjust them on your face as you look closer at the gash marks mm -hmm. in the side of the carriage. Yes. Quite. It is clear to you, at, in first inspection, it, it looked like something was trying to get in. But now that you look at these, these were nowhere near the door. This was a warning. This was left on purpose, almost as if to tell you, whatever this was, was here. You were being watched. And as you come to this realization, you feel eyes on your back. You turn and you look behind you, there's nothing there in the forest line. You turn to look to the side, nothing there. You feel eyes on your left, you look, nothing there. No matter where you turn, you feel it. Something primal. Your body knows you are being watched. This was not an attack, it was a warning. Made by a sentient being. Almost certainly. Are we being watched, Mr. Morgan? Uh, and I will look at him, and then I'll just kind of like look around. I don't know. What do I pay you for? I'm a good shot when I'm drunk. <laughs> Inspector. Yes? Oh, is that your title? It is now. <laughs> <laughs> Inspector, please take That's a look around. Cool. Um, yes, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best to walk around the, the scene and like scope the tree line a little bit. Roll a perception check. I'll make sure this tree is sturdy. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Uh, Perception. Uh, <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> what would perception be? Fucking perception is uh, wisdom. Wiz it's wisdom. Wiz wisdom. Wiz eighteen. Oh, nice. Ooh, that's pretty good. You look around the tree line, and you are positive that there is nothing in the tree line. There, if something's watching you, it'd have to be quite far out. It is highly unlikely that the professor is actually being watched. He's clearly just spooked. He's clearly just uncomfortable. Well, well, frightened. I see, I see nothing that suggests we're being watched from the tree line, Professor. It seems as though you might not get to meet your werewolf tonight after all. Damn it. Excellent thinking, Caprice. And I'll walk over and I'll sit down next to you. Mm -hmm. And I'll slide back against the tree as you'll hear the as the bark of the tree will start to grow as it starts to consume me. <laughs> as I cast Green Dream. Oh. And uh, I will should be able to spend time to uh, move my consciousness uh, for trees in a one mile radius. Okay. Ooh. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ooh. Okay. I'm doing what? I'm looking for werewolves, I'm looking, I'm trying to commune. If I feel like the old ones and the old gods are powerful here and they're numerous, I would like to dive into that green sea and join the consciousness of the trees that see all they've seen, they've observed for longer. And I'm attempting to basically, for 10 minutes, just, and it's like I'm suddenly omniscient. Mm -hmm. I need to take the time to basically yeah. go around and I'll fan out as as roots and trees. And so basically Caprice is actually just napping. And <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm uh, as, as roots and branches and wood start, and bark starts to cover me 
as I transfer my consciousness into the the, the green network. You see through the eyes of the very land itself. And you have done this before. It is not as simple as seeing from tree to tree, but seeing all at once and picking the right place to look. As your eyes scan everything, looking for any sign of what could have done this, it takes you a full 10 minutes before you finally catch just the barest glimpse of something. Hulking, dark, wolf-like shadows creeping just out of reach of your vision, heading in the same direction that this road would take you in, almost as if they're lurking, waiting, expecting you to maybe get comfortable and continue on your journey and not imagine that they would be up ahead, but behind. You have seen their tricks. You know where they lurk now. About a mile up ahead. Uh, for the 10 minutes that you're doing this, I see Caprice's napping yeah, up I'm against out. a tree. I see you look like you're napping up against a tree, yep. but you've grown into the tree. I'm looking around at the rest of you. I go back over to the, the overturned carriage and I'm and I'm, I'm grumbling as I reach in and I go to find another unopened bottle, an unbroken bottle of alcohol. What does he pay me for? You gotta be kidding me, I'm the fun one. You got the goddamn everybody else, a bunch of wet blankets, unbelievable. And I'm gonna stash a <laughs> bottle of booze and then find my own tree to sit down next to and pretend that I'm gonna take a nap. You find a really large oak, uh, towering, uh, larger than the others. It has uh, beautiful knotwork roots at the bottom that um, almost create a, a seat covered in moss. It seems nice and cozy and you sidle down into into the moss and the roots and it's a, a veritable ancient forest lazy boy. A throne <laughs> fit for a sinner. Well, I'm glad you've all made yourselves comfortable, but is anyone going to try to fix the, the carriage? Fix it? What, do we look like a bunch of mechanics? What? First we have to uh, make sure that we're not in any danger and whatnot, you know? <laughs> Oh. Hey, what do we call it? Inspector. <laughs> call uh, it? Yes. Is that what we're calling it? Inspector. Inspector. I call him Fire Bro. He doesn't see anything haunting us from the tree lines. You're all being silly. Well, I mean, uh, 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 Champ over here, he's, 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 he's in the plants, he's in the trees, he's looking around. He's... <laughs> very well. Very well. I suppose the time. horses have run off anyway. Sarnax is a little weird, but he's doing his weird thing, and it usually works out for us, all right? Usually. Well, something did this to the caravan. I think Sarnax will find the path, and we hunt it down. No. Whenever we're in a forest like this, we, he always helps find the way. I mean, you remember the, all those times, and I made those hilarious jokes about seeing the forest for the trees? Like, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed every time. <clears throat> Even if we fix the carriage, the horses are gone, right? The horses, the horses have, they dragged the carriage with you in it um, for a good 20 to 30 feet before they were able to rip themselves from the, um, from the, uh, what do you call that thing that they're connected to? Oh, yeah. They're harnesses. You're gonna feel that um, one tomorrow. And they, um, they have clearly run off into the woods. They were frightened, they were horrified by what was happening. Dijen, Thank you, Chad. Do you think that you can like, uh, Use some of those muscles and just uh, topple over the. I, I, I could help, and I conjure a hand with fingerless gloves and like patches. Uh, that's just like. <laughs> 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 huh? What are you gonna do with that? I mean, I could give it like a little. Uh, while you're, you know, you've got all the, uh, the biceps and the triceps and the quadceps. Why would we even need to get the caravan back? Oh, you've noticed my quadceps. <laughs> <laughs> Why would we even need to get the caravan back up, right? The horses are gone. Well, I, in but case they, they come back. Comfortable to sit while we wait. Maybe they'll hit a town up ahead and someone will come for us. I suppose. I don't know why I didn't think of this. Hey, horses! <whistles> oh. oh, no, we're good, we're good, we're all right. <clears throat> well, <let's> see. <laughs> 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 all, the, all, the, all the branches and the, and the roots snap Ooh, away from me. Never get oh. used to that. It is surprising. The beasts lurk in the night. Which the, direction? The hour of the wolf, the direction of our destination. There is intelligence there. Lupine, indeed. 
but just out of range of my dreams. They call, they wait. Let us give them the death they so eagerly call for as they howl in the night. We can kill them, I suppose, but I at least want to encounter one. But they could kill us. No, I don't believe that's true. I mean, look at us. I guess you're just a hobo, but the rest of us. <laughs> look at us. I'm only here because you haven't paid me yet. It's been seven years. I need to get back to my family. I don't pay hobos. You just don't leave. The priest is on to something. They might be able to kill us, and that, my friends, is exciting. It would be if it were true, but... We know that that's not the case. Oh, Tashan, it's not fun if you win every time. Yeah. <laughs> you speak with arrogance. How can you possibly know, unless you fought them before? I have faith. I have faith that Fujian will guide my axe, and anything that comes to us will be cleaved head from shoulder. It will be a great battle. They are a mile away waiting for a meal that will not come. But if we all fall and provide sustenance to these wolves, it will be right. Man, I just love the stuff Tasha and Sarnak say. <laughs> Woohoo! You guys are bad. Ready, your god. <clears throat> Tell him to prepare for blood. Caprice, ready. <laughs> <laughs> My hand is returning from the carriage with another mummy. Yeah. <laughs> Caprice, yeah. ready your pocket of rusty nails. <laughs> oh, sorry, she's Muffin. full of them today. Muffin. This Muffin. is what I'm talking Muffin. about. Muffin. Damn! The rusty nails are all the way at the bottom. <laughs> Muffin. 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 pastry. Muffin. 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 Fu Zhao is always ready for blood, as you should be. The old ones will drink and enjoy the sacrifice, no matter how the battle goes. Caprice, you're riding this down! With what? <laughs> ah, damn, those are some good ones. I will attempt to better understand our predicament where we are. I will peer beyond and see what I can learn. And I will reach into my jacket and I'll pull out a large pearl, almost. It's huge. Uh, you know, it fits in, in my hand. And it's very slightly translucent. It looks almost opaque. Uh, but it, it, it shines with almost an otherworldly um, pearlescence. And uh, I will take it in my hand and I will just stare into it. And as I stare, just for a split second, you'll see a flash of a bright orange eye with a vertical black pupil. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. Professor, <laughs> steady yourself. Good fortune. Good fortune today, yes. yes, yes, yes. I, was, I, I, was, I was granted. Grant good, 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 good tidings from beyond. I believe these are werewolves. And mechanically, I use the peer beyond feature, <laughs> and I rolled these two dice earlier today. But Ooh, I wanted to represent oh, it thematically. Yeah. Uh, a uh, nineteen, and it was a two. Oh, whoa! Uh, and so. Funny. I get to choose one of them to be my madness pool. <laughs> what? Uh, and I chose 19, and so I'll leave it at that. Oh no. Okay. Okay. What a chat. Wow. <clears throat> I just also want to point out real quick before we get back into it. We've got like, you know, Crimson Dynasty. You're like peering into the, the madness. He's like up with the trees. You're like this witch hunter, and then we've got like Derek. a hobo and a guy with a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a lot of muffins. <laughs> yeah. And they're pretty good. So you think they're good? You seem confident and fine, so I'm ready to trust you. No, yes, we should do stop at nothing to find these werewolves and uh, 
try to communicate with them, learn what we can, and perhaps kill them. All right, I'm in. Lead the way. Did I get a sense of, you know, I, I'm just going to sort of try to use all of my sensory uh, abilities, including anything I may have gained from uh, Beyond the Veil, uh, what direction these wolves might be in. Or actually, Sarnax what direction? already told you that it's just following along the, the road. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's continue so, then. I say. <laughs> None of that happens. <laughs> all right, Professor, lead the way. And so you do that. You, um, conveniently for you, uh, these wolves are along the path that you're traveling. Mm. Almost <laughs> as if it were written that way for ease of... <laughs> for the sake of brevity. <laughs> uh, but you, uh, you walk the rough mile that Sarnax indicated that these werewolves would um, were located. And it takes you about 15 minutes at the pace that you're going. You are not trying to move too quickly or too slowly. You are keeping your senses um, trained on the tree line. All of you working together to listen for any noises that would um, would indicate that the wolves may be lurking somewhere within, um, that werewolves may be lurking somewhere within. And you um, you take about 15, 15 minutes or so before roll your perception check. Oh. Oh, natural. I am perceptive. My <laughs> name is Sarnax and I speak for the trees, motherfucker. <laughs> 15. Natural 20. Oh! oh! First one! Mm. Perception is whiz. Yeah. Two. Ooh, a four! <laughs> Ten. I got an eight. Twenty-five. Um, Damn. Victoria, Sarnax, the both of you are alerted to the noise before anyone else, and you put your hands out to stop the group as you listen, and you hear the deep, deep breathing with a, a subtle growl to it. Just up ahead, right in the, the very edges of the tree line, as if something's waiting, something's lurking. And it's in that moment that you notice this, that you immediately feel that same thing that Clayton had described to you of being watched. As all of the hairs on your skin prick up and you feel a breath on your neck for a second and you know, without a shadow of a doubt, that something is watching. I will hold my hand up, and then with my other hand, um, I have a set of blood red beads around my neck. I'll clasp them, and we are certainly not alone any longer. See, I'm not mad. I told you all. The beast is upon us. Well, we said you were mad, Professor. Just hang, hang on there. Well, I've right, heard you there. whispering, Mr. Morgan. Don't think I don't. All right. Let's all just take a deep breath. And take a look around and see what's going on. We mean you no harm, werewolves. We just wish to learn. You hear skittering in, in the tree line. Branches uh, cracking, um, rubble being moved this way or that, the leaves swishing. Um, and you, you hear it rushing towards you in the tree line. And then silence, an unnatural silence. This sounded large. Whatever it was. Uh, I wonder if they understood me. Uh, I will. Uh, I will look towards the group and I'll say, regardless, they mean to strike. Prepare for blood. The old gods will drink well, and you'll hear my whole body start to creak and the cracking of wood as my scales will darken in color and they'll turn to a bark as roots and uh, branches will grow out of my skin around my head, almost like antlers for a moment before they wrap around as uh, from my arm will form a uh, huge gnarled wooden club um, that is like dripping with this black sap as on my other arm growing out, uh, nodding more and more and more basically forms like a circular shield, and uh, within it are, are three dark holes that look like two eyes and a mouth, and the eyes are like weeping with the same black sap. 
as I use my Wood Woes wild shape feature. <gasps> um, That's so fun. Uh, yeah, let's thecrookedmoon.com <laughs> to enjoy really badass fucking subclasses! <sighs> as I will hold out my shield and I'll hold out my club as I will look. I can answer three This hours. is not quiet, the transformation that he undergoes. And you immediately, once again, hear that same sound from the tree line as if something is mobilizing, something is moving. It is getting closer and closer. You feel almost claustrophobic as if there there is something surrounding you. Oh yeah, Sarnhax, you done pissed him off now. They wanted to keep us from something. Let's see what it is. Because no evil shall escape my sight. And I take uh, my Librum off my hip, and it's this brown, like pebbled brown leather tome uh, ridged on the edges with uh, silver on the sides of the the book. Uh, And I close my eyes and it'll open and the pages will start to fly through uh, themselves and it'll stop very briefly. Uh, and you might just even catch a glimpse for just a moment on the page that it ends on uh, the the shape of what it seems to be a wolf. Uh, and then I snap the book shut and I open my eyes and they're uh, engulfed in a golden flame. Uh, and I cast Divine Sense. Oh! Ooh. Uh, as an action, you can detect good and evil until the end of your next turn. You can sense anything affected by the hollow, hollow spell or know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet. Mm. You utilize this ability and you reach your senses out expecting to, to pick up on anything, but you are met with silence. It seems as though this evil escapes my sight. <laughs> and it is in that moment <laughs> that you hear a you hear a cacophonous choir of howling as six gigantic dire wolves leap out of (laughs) leap out of the tree line and attack all of you. All right, Mysterium Incorporated. (laughs) Kill the wolves. But look how dire they are. Maybe (laughs) next. Damn it! Oh, that's great. Oh, the well baits. Done, Nikki. Well done. <laughs> the baits. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Like Maybe next him. year. Maybe next year, buddy. Get us on a map. Here Will on. it never be werewolves? Let's, let's get that camera over here. Never be werewolves. Never. Please. Producer Rick over here. Sarnax and Tashin are going to be up in the lead, and Victoria will be close behind. Well, you have to watch the ground. It's icy, um, and if we slip, <laughs> we'll I need run into 20 a to 25. Oh, oh, this one. my initiative here. <laughs> Oh. Huh. oh, oh, that's pretty good. Damn. Roll this very large dice. Uh, one minute. That's a big uh, dice. Oh, yeah, I got an 18. So I'll wait till after you see 20. Oh, no. Uh, what's, what's the ad for initiative? Yeah. <laughs> Dexterity. Uh, dex. Just dex. Yep, just straight dex. Uh, once we establish the initiative, actually, while everybody, well, once you establish the initiative order, I would like to describe my class feature. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, please. Uh, you got it, 2025? Anybody get 20? 20. To 20? Oh, Sarnax, look at you go, buddy. 18 go. for old shit. 19. 19. Oh. oh. Bad. You Which one of them? I would yes. have to go I'm feeling very lazy. <laughs> Your room? I don't have initiative cards, so. Mm. Well, well, just like, say you do. You uh, who see else? Him. Who was there? Uh, and Lethica goes right here between uh, Your Grim and uh, Marius. Yes. Yeah. Then it's the wolves. Does anybody else 17. smell pie? <laughs> Damn, we all roll really high. I got a 10. Except for Clay. Because <laughs> you're just like, it's just like, oh, just kill the yeah. Yeah. Kill the wolf. Die wolves again. And now, for the first time, I get to use Sinner's Gamble. <gasps> Woo! After rolling for initiative, or as a bonus action, I get to roll 5d6s. Yeehaw! I got a one, a two, a three, a three, and a four. And what I'm looking for is a pair, two pair, three of a kind, a full house, a street, four of a kind, or five of a kind. I can, I got a pair. I can keep that, or I can use another instance of Sinner's Gamble to reroll any number of these dice and look for another bonus. 
So for now, I'm going to keep my pair and get 10 feet of movement for the next three rounds. Woo! That's, what I know. That's, nice. yeah. That's pretty cool. Let's fucking go. Yeah, damn. Because the game is on. I what? pictured an animated oh, shepherd, man. like the like the animation <laughs> at the beginning of Jurassic Park with the DNA guy. You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. now I got a full house. And there's frog DNA <laughs> and all sorts of good stuff. <laughs> The Crooked Moon, if you want this uh, rogue subclass. Oh, I yeah. can use Sinner's Gamble up to the number of times with my proficiency bonus, which is three. Um, uh, Sarnax, it's your turn. You are um, not considered surprised because you knew they were in the tree line. Oh, thank you. Uh, I am going to, oh gosh, I'm going to run at them with my Wood Woes um, transformation as I will say, it may be the hour of the wolf, but it is also the hour of your death, beasts. And I'll run up just to the first one, uh, as I will uh, have my club, which will be just dripping in sap, as I am going to... Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Um... Oh god, this is... I'm looking for the third one. Oh, it should be on the, the first one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I will use my bonus action uh, to, uh, uh, to to uh, to as, I, as as I'm running at them. Suddenly, all of the wood that's on my body starts to sprout into spiky thorns and brambles as I cast Wild Thorns, uh, a new spell, as a bonus action, and uh, with, for the duration of the spell, which is an hour. Uh, any any time I'm hit with a melee attack, the attacker takes one d six piercing damage. Mm -hmm. So I run up and I um, attempt to make an attack with my uh, large club, and uh, I think I just have one attack here. Uh, it's a two. Oh, I'm gonna use a twist. I'm gonna use a twist. Yeah. I'm gonna use a twist. Absolutely twist. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Make three. sure you keep track of your twist, though. You don't have that many. Yeah, we don't. Uh, I'm going to save my M twist. Mr. Madness. Oh, wait. Do we twist? Yes. Yes. Just once. Uh, Professor Sorry. Madness. Yes? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's not my name! <laughs> he said that. And so, did it hit? Oh, uh, no, no, I miss. What? I miss. I'll just swing as well, I'm was, just covered what was the, in wooden um, bark. What was the, the hit? Oh, I mean, it was three plus. I don't know what your plus uh, is, to be honest. It should be plus. It should be eight. Should yeah, plus eight. Um, right. Yeah, it's one. Miss. Oh, Ten hits. hits. Ten hits? Oh! oh. 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 Okay. Now I know why they're called dire wolves. <laughs> uh, as it smashes in, as dire. I get to enjoy dire. some beefy damage because I'm a wood woes, uh, I'm gonna use my... Oh. So why are you gonna tell me? Three you could've forgone an entire hit. Is eight points of bludgeoning damage. And as I um, hit this um, uh, wolf, the uh, the sap from that is that is oozing from my mallet or my giant club will seep into its uh, its fur as uh, you'll start to it it'll start to kind of uh, its ears will twitch as it hears the voice of the old ones and uh, it will be disadvantaged on attacking anyone but me. Okay. You slam your um, wood woe mallet what what is it club club club, club uh, into the wolf it lets out a uh, this dire wolf it lets out a a painful shriek as uh, it takes the full brunt force uh, from this new form uh, doing a significant amount of damage it uh, already begins to crumple to the ground but it writes itself and continues to snarl at you that's my turn uh Taishan. thank you very much mate i run up to this this dire wolf, uh, and with my giant gleaming great axe, uh, I will swing at it <coughs> twice. That dire wolf's name is Jeff, spelled G-E-O-F. -S. Which number? <laughs> that is... is. They don't have numbers. Let's uh, do numbers. numbers. So we have a pen. Oh, no, I didn't really do down. numbers. Uh, okay. Just up, up, up. Yeah. anybody with a pen can number them real quick. Whichever one uh, Mike attacked was number one. We'll so. so this is number two. <laughs> no, just fine. Just put just, just put that in front of Mike. Okay, so three is Jeff. Got it. Jeff! Three, five, and six. Three, six on that one. Five. Three, six. Gracias. 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 Uh, oh, 
lost. Uh, um, ooh, 25 to hit. Oh, yes, that hits. <laughs> All right. Ooh, my. Uh, and... Now on my, now, smite. Yes. Is that an action? Yeah. Or if I hit with an attack, do I just say so, that I like yes. to smite? It, as a paladin, if you land an attack, you can then sp- expend spell slots, uh, I believe up to two, to uh-huh. empower the attack with a smite. Ooh. And it's 1d8 per spell slot, <clears throat> extra 2d8 per spell slot used. That's correct. And I believe that's bread and butter paladin. Yeah, that is yeah. just straight up paladin. So if you want to expend one spell slot, you get to add an extra 2d8 damage to your uh, hit. The, the cool thing is you do get to wait till after to see if it hits, because then if it crits, you just go absolutely ham and double all the dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it yeah, hit, yeah, then yeah, you can you yeah. can smite. Uh, is there any way you can tell me what their max health is? Is that cheating? <laughs> no. yeah, that would be cheating. Not for any, for any kind of work this, <laughs> That would be cheating. I, well, I got, it's, I would it's say, important. I would That's say you, you, watched, you watched Sarnax um, bludgeon one, and it seems like it's barely holding on. Is it, what is bludgeon? Wait, how much damage did you do? How much blood? Uh, we well, wouldn't Sarnax? know. I don't remember. But in one well, hit, you just, saw that impor- he did. It's important to me. <laughs> it's All right. right. He hit, he hit I'm going to deal, I'm gonna deal 15 damage, and then I'd like oh, to know how this guy's looking. Well, we should talk about this. Yeah. We should talk about this. Because the, the, the feature, as I believe it, is would you have to land the hit when it's at a quarter. Not, like, bring it down. I, I, oh, I thought I had to... Off. You motherfucker! No, no, no! <laughs> okay, I deal 15 damage. Enough yes. of that nonsense. I deal 15 damage. I'd like to know how so this which guy will... The three. Make it a quarter. You, a um... You and how are you doing this? My sense. giant great hand. axe, as I grab it with uh, my left hand, as I was resting it over my shoulder, uh, I swing down and try and cleave through it with 15 points of damage. But um, I don't want to kill it if, like, if it has one. Yeah, so I would say that your feature will activate when the creature is at a quarter or less. But I you use bring it, it into though, right? It's a bonus action. The Channel yes. Divinity? Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. I'm excited. I'm just trying to pop off. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just attack. You, just attack. But, yeah, fifteen so, damage. Where are we you at? You bring your mallet. You you grab. Uh, great axe. Sorry, you grab the handle My of your great axe. Gaming great axe. And you swing it down, completely cleaving this uh, dire wolf in two. Damn it! Um, it it Ugh. screams out in pain as the <laughs> life leads leaves its eyes. I want you to roll a perception check for me, please. But it does it does die in that hit. Oh, we know! Oh. oh, well. Stupid, weak wolves. Ah, <laughs> uh, like eight, I think. Uh, eight. Uh, you, you notice something strange for a moment, but um, something about its eyes uh, catches you off guard for a moment. As, as you continue to stare, <laughs> you, you shake your head and you think to yourself, it, it's the forest and this everything about this is um, is unsettling and you you saw nothing. As I cleave it clean in half and the blood sprays against my face and I turn back and look at Shepard with a gleaming grin and say, it is still quite fun when you win. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dash in on no. Uh, Lethica. Lethica is you. Caprice. <laughs> this is so hard. Something it's so hard it. using it's, it's other. It's a difficult lineup. Yeah. It's a difficult lineup. Uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, you know, I'll just sort of do one of these, like, spin on my foot, like, and uh, start to turn away. You guys got this. You, you're doing great. Well done, jo- uh, Tai Shen. I'll back up to the, where the professor is, um, and I'll start to. <laughs> and I'll play a joyful tune. And it's so joyful that all of you feel inspired. I will spend my entire turn, action and bonus action alike, <laughs> to give everyone, spending two of my bardic inspirations, uh, up to my charisma modifier, a uh, bardic inspiration. So each one of you benefits from a 1d8 oh. that you will enjoy just like you might normally any other bardic inspiration. Oh, shit. And uh, you, can t- you can add that to an attack roll, to a saving throw, or to an ability check sometime in the next 10 minutes, which... Uh, it's combat being as difficult as it is, I probably imagine we'll be spending all 600 rounds, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I back up and I just sort of like put my, sh- my arm on the shoulder of the professor. Muffin? 
Uh, I'm actually a bit peckish. Please, please. <laughs> <laughs> you use your bone. You use your reaction to eat the muffin. That's fine. I'm just kidding. No, I will. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> and that'll be the conclusion I'll use it if you make me. Uh, Shepard. Uh, I see everything that's going on here. Uh, I'm going to use uh, all of my movement. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 to kind of swing way out. And uh, as I'm moving, with a quick flick of the wrist, you kind of see this smoky, uh, misty magic uh, where out of nowhere, almost from etherealness into uh, solidity, uh, two, uh, two weapons, guns, ranged weapons appear in my hand. And I say, thank you, Grin and Sinner, as I bear down on uh, number six with my weapons Kulev and Flambeau, which are <laughs> the Serpent and the Torch. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. And I'll make two attacks. Go. I'll make two attacks. Um, I'm gonna do it on number, uh, shit, I'll do it on number six. I'll okay. do it on number six. Uh, 12 and 17 to hit. Both of those hit. Uh, I unfortunately don't have one that I can attack without absolutely obliterating the one that Sarnax is on for sneak attack damage, so they're just going to be regular attacks. <laughs> Eight total points of damage. Woo! Uh, you, you let loose, uh, what kind of, uh, what kind of energy or effect do these, uh, radiate? A wise man once said, Voodoo gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's He's a winner. He's a winner. Um, you let loose um, two bolts of uh, harnessed voodoo magic, and um, you blast into these uh, dire wolves. These wolves are gigantic. Um, they tower over you, but they are dropping so easily. It's just like everything else you've experienced here. Strange. Um, as this one crumbles, but it is able to right itself as its uh, sl um, slobbering maw um, is, is angled towards you. It looks uh, angry and hungry for blood. And then as a bonus action, I'd like to use my cunning action to attempt to hide behind a spooky old tree. Okay. You do that. Um, they are going, I can't really see the map at all. I got you. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, none of that helps yeah. you at all. It doesn't. <laughs> um, they are going this. to all surround the orange and the green. I don't know who those are. Tasha and Sarnet. Mm. Yes, they are going to use their You're movement to do that. Um, there are three <laughs> on me. Uh, the three on you are going to make their attacks. They are at advantage because they are pack tactics. That is right. Um, all of them will hit. Perfect. How do you um, know? Uh, because they rolled over 20 for oh, every single one yes. of their attacks. Oh, fuck. Good <laughs> um, <laughs> thing you cast Wild Thorns, which is a Crooked Moon um, spell. Ooh. Crooked Moon, you say? I did. My goodness. Um, one is going to miss, and then the other one's going to hit with a 20. Ooh. But not a non-natural 20. Just a regular 20. damage? 20 to hit. Oh, sorry. Um, just uh, they are they are all going to lean in and begin to bite you, Sarnax. Um, all of them finding purchase on you. I need you to make three strength saving throws, please. Oh, oh boy. Oh, that's I, a good one. I, I smash it. Twenty-one, and then actually no, I guess nineteen, and then uh, ten. And then uh, ten. Or are there eleven? Eleven. eleven. You're going to take twenty-two points of piercing damage <gasps> from all three of them. Um, they're all going to take a. Uh, Two points of piercing damage. Oh, which, which numbers? Uh, which oh, uh, one, five, and six. If you just fail the saving throw, you could use your inspiration. Oh, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm already pro. I'm already. I'm already. Oh, okay. Um, you need uh, thirteen. Yeah. For the saves, otherwise you're you not pro. Oh, you plus four. Oh, you plus four. And and you. Oh, oh, oh yeah, you. Yeah, actually, you, you pass pass four. Four. I pass. I pass. So I'm still yeah. standing. And you. I'm, they. They all again. lunge at you. You feel oh, the no. teeth pierce I'm into bark and flesh and scale, as they. They attempt to uh, begin to consume you. They are ravenous in their attack on you, and they are all—they are working together as a unit, um, not splitting up, um, but picking a target and going for it. The same thing for you, Taishan. Uh, one of them uh, is 
distracted by the smell of blood as Sarnax is attacked, and it does not, um, uh, it, it misses you all together. Uh, the other one does um, five points of piercing damage and a strength saving throw, please. The old ones drink well tonight. And I am, be- I'm bleeding like profusely, but I, I just, I don't care. Like I'm, I'm kind of, it's hard to tell what is blood and what is yeah. tree sap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What did you get? Uh, 22, strength save. You, um, it, it's clear that they are trying to knock you to the ground to begin feasting on you, uh, but they are unable to topple you. You have quadceps. You are incredibly <laughs> strong. Um, and they, uh, <laughs> They do, they're not successful in their endeavor. And that is their turn. Oh, um, the Victoria. Room? Okay. Um, I'm going to look around, and I too seem a little distracted by all the blood. Um, I will <laughs> raise my hand and see some uh, sort of like a, a splash of blood that's come from, I can't really tell what. Maybe it's the wolves, maybe it's my compatriots. <laughs> Um, but I will raise my hand up and the blood will float up and then I will fling it out, fling my hand out towards number six um, and attack them with a blood bolt. Ooh. Oh, love that. Um, so as it flies towards number six, uh, the iron and the blood will solidify almost into like a, a metal dagger and then... Love uh, that. A, a, a blood them. spike. A blood, a blood spike, spike, if you will, yeah. I like that. Okay, okay. Um, so make a ranged spell attack. Oh yeah. Fifteen. Plus. That hits. Doesn't matter. Plenty. Um, okay. So you will take one d six necrotic damage, and then please make a Constitution saving throw, and that is to number six. That fails. Okay. Take four necrotic damage, um, and using this excellent Crooked Moon spell, Blood Bolt, um, I will regain hit points equal to half the damage dealt. I... Great. So you will you will get two points of healing from this blood bolt. You watch as um, the blood seems to split, and as it turns into a weapon, it pierces into the flesh. You watch as uh, the rest of it returns back to Victoria and slams into her chest, revitalizing her. I will lick my lips and pass my tail. Oh my goodness. Oh. Uh, this wolf is... Um, is almost laying on the ground. It is um, struggling to uh, to move at all. Uh, Victoria, I want you to make a perception check for me, please. Ooh. Me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not very good. <laughs> Six, uh, 11. Uh, yes, with an 11, you, you watch this animal, and the first thing you notice are its eyes. The way the eyes are moving, it's as if it's watching things that it, it wouldn't be in this in this situation. This wolf, this dire wolf is clearly dying. It is uh, it is mere inches from death and it is struggling to even regain its footing, but it's not staring at the ground and the way its paws are slipping on the dirt and the and the blood as it tries to right itself. Its eyes are darting from from Clayton, the Sarnax to Caprice mm-hmm. to you lingering, watching, taking you in, as if there is something behind the eyes controlling it. <gasps> well, I don't like that. Um, uh, Clayton. I will uh, wave my hand and my case will whip up and open up and from it levitating will be this massive tome with a ruby embedded in the oh, front of it. Yeah. And it's almost like, it doesn't look like a human made it. It's made of patches of skin that might look like cuttlefish, or there might be scales, <laughs> maybe like a tooth or two. Uh, a tooth. And I'll wave my hand again, and it's going to flip open, and I'll start flipping through it. This is the one. Yes. Ya, ya, kalikile, halasha, halasha! And I'm going to cast uh, Summon Voidling. <laughs> And my oh, eyes shit. will roll back, and right here, uh, a almost tear in reality oh, opens sure, up. Sure. Uh, a, 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 a tear in reality sure. <laughs> will uh, will open up, and they will feel very cold. Anyone near it, uh, as they peer into this dark, almost black water sea. It's hard to tell, 
And then from the, t- the Terran reality, uh, two orange eyes will alight as this um, inky black creature that looks part cuttlefish, part lobster, and it has sort of spines down its back uh, as it's going to come out and uh, basically l- leap out and latch onto uh, one of these. So we'll say this guy. So we'll say he's right yeah. here. Which number? Final attack number one. Okay. Uh, and he'll like he'll like head crab it. Um, he's already he's already pretty damaged though. I don't know if you want to do like a fresh guy. Oh yeah, this is I already smashed. Smash, 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 smash. I know. I think that's fine. He called roll. it already. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Touch piece, move piece. Yeah. That's right. Touch piece, move <laughs> piece. Right. Oh jeez, professor, what was in that muffin? <laughs> is that uh, a cuttlefish? I'm losing my fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> More than you know. Uh, Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen hits. Uh, uh, it is going to do. <laughs> Uh, one, uh, yeah. yeah. Five, yeah. six, seven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, seven points of damage. Uh, you watch as this tear in reality opens, and from this um, endless, incomprehensible sea, this voidling creature uh, darts out and attaches itself to the face of the wolf. And you watch as in, um, In a split second, it's hard to understand what this entity is doing to this wolf, but you watch as its head almost cracks and shrinks in on itself, um, twisting and and reforming again as it lets out this scream that is um, otherworldly, a type of scream that, that lungs of this creature would not be possible of making before you watch it as as its eyes turn inky black and then pearlescent white and then inky black and then you watch as the dire wolf falls dead. And then I will say now die and I'm going to spend three madness points to make it explode. Oh! Uh, oh At the end of its turn. Uh, (laughs) In a 10 foot radius, so that's basically everybody here. Um, Make a deck saving throw, or your movement drops to zero out of pure fear. (laughs) Or I can spend an additional five madness points, and it's a uh, paralysis if you fail. Uh, so I'm just gonna go Nova with all my madness points because I rolled high today. Yeah, what the fuck? Uh, yeah. So deck save or you're paralyzed until uh, my next turn. <laughs> well, uh, which ones? Uh, every wolf. Six, five. Like grab my uh, Taishan oh. and uh, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, four, it's four, so yeah. All the wolves. So roll deck saving throws. They oh, yeah. both lose. I roll. They both fail. I rolled yeah. uh, roll a five and a four. Plus yeah. four. So this creature starts to swell and swell and burst, Are you, and the all wolf? of a sudden. No, or the, 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 the okay. voidling that I saw, and, sure. and the spikes all of a sudden, instead of kind of going down its back, all point out, puffer almost fish. like a puffer fish, yeah! and it starts to look distressed, and it bursts, and 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 ichor and spikes fly everywhere, and hopefully you guys can dodge them. <laughs> I dodged it. I hate when he does this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all, uh, all, my my uh, <laughs> my <laughs> edelwood shield. shield is gonna get completely covered in guts. So I, I they failed. The they all failed. Yeah, there are only two of them there, right? The <laughs> no, they're all in it. If it's ten feet, yeah. he's here. And it's in this, oh, I guess I was told no, five and six. He, not two. So four, oh. four, five, so and just, six. And one is oh, so ten. four as well. One more. Yeah, four as well. Okay. The DC is only like sixteen. Okay. Um. Wait, and and it's a dexterity you say? Yes. Okay. So four saves, five and six failed because they rolled four. Okay. Five and six are paralyzed. Nothing happens you if you save. You're okay, good. you're okay. good. You've dodged and down It's no damage. It's not damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope, it's okay. damn. just the horrific paralysis effect. We're not uh, trapping this forest with Sarnax. this wolf. <laughs> was my turn Yeah. Oh wow, that was quick. <clears throat> um, good. I am going <laughs> to, uh, oh god, I wasn't ready for this. I am just That was go- quick, well done, gang. I Thank am you. just going <laughs> to to, which is the five or six, which looks weakest? Uh, six. Six. I'm just going to try to coup de gras. As he's covered in, uh, is he paralyzed? Yes. yes. Number six? Yeah, so your advantage, advantage the attack, and if you hit. Yeah, if you hit, it's an auto, uh, I think it's an auto crit. Auto crit, yep. yeah. I'll look at the wolf as it's paralyzed, and I will say, die will, my friend, as I'm going to just bring my, uh, uh, and I'm advantaged, because he's paralyzed, right? Yep. It's still going to hit. Yeah, it's a 16. Yeah, that hits. 16. And so it's an auto crit. 
Oh, is that how that works? Mm -hmm. Paralysis is the one oh my of the nastiest god. condition. I think so. Oh my god, that's fucking nasty. Uh, that is gonna be five plus uh, twelve plus uh, um, fourteen points of damage. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> you bring your club down on the head of this wolf, and with a sickening crunch, uh, its skull collapses beneath the weight, and you watch as the eyes that had been watching you almost um, too closely uh, while this creature was dying, uh, as they um, go milky for a moment, and then life leaves them completely. Okay, it's my turn. Uh, yeah. Hey, Jen. yeah. Don't take all the fun, Sarnax. Uh, and I reach behind my cloak and I whip out a coil of iron wrought chain as I cast Chain of Conviction. <laughs> uh, I hurl, so this chain will leap out from my hand as the end of it, uh, it explodes into a red flame. Uh, it's point cracked, uh, almost looking like, uh, not a morning star, something kind of like that. Like a, like a, like a barb. pyramid, like a, yeah. like a barb of sorts. Uh, as I hurl out this chain, it moves with a serpent-like fluidity as it weaves around Sarnax and attempts to pierce into Wolf 5. Okay, volume. Uh, you hurl a chain and hook a creature within 20 feet that you can see. The creature cannot move away from you for the duration of the spell. All attacks the against the creature are made with advantage. Uh, the creature must make a strength saving throw or be pulled into melee range of me. Can it even do that if it's paralyzed? I don't know what paralyzed. Um, I don't know what paralyzed does to saving throws. I'll uh, look it up. Uh, you automatically fail strength and yeah. dex. So yeah. then you yeah. just yeah. pull them in. So you just it just automatically works. <laughs> uh, and as it's That's swing, cool. as it's pulling towards me, and the chain is just ripping back in, and it's flying through the air, and it weaves back towards me, uh, I swing out my great axe and try and just fucking decapitate it. <laughs> Jesus. That hits. 16? Yeah, that yeah, hits. Yeah, you What do you say as you yank him in? <laughs> Please come over here. <laughs> Please get nearer. I would very much appreciate it if you would die. <laughs> uh, 12 damage as I uh, arc out with my giant great axe. Does the piercing of the thing do any damage to it? Okay. No, but I mean, I got smite, that's what you're saying. I also got a second attack, so it's totally good. Uh, you, <laughs> you watch as uh, Tai Shen um, guides this chain towards the wolf. Um, in a mere instant, the wolf is ripped towards you. It cannot uh, resist you as it is held in this paralysis state uh, by the uh, void magics of um, Professor Azran. Um, and as it gets closer, you um, you slice your great axe down on it, um, completely um, slicing part of the wolf um, part of its back haunch from its body. It is um, it is dangling there on your chain for a split second, struggling. But its eyes don't say struggle. Its eyes look directly towards you, and if a wolf could smile, it looks like it Ooh. would. This As it watches right? you. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <coughs> I also... He's so bloodthirsty. Activate. <laughs> Station. This has been pent up for like a year Listen, and a half. all right? This is, this is a tricky... Listen. All right, I activate my sacred earth. I channel divinity. Um, around me, uh, as this wolf looks up, uh, you'll see almost uh, like my draconic features will, will take on, uh, become even more slightly draconic. Uh, my eyes, uh, all, like a little more lizard-like uh, dragon form, uh, as flames will start to form at the end of my mouth as I twirl uh, my great axe for a moment, uh, stopping it in one as the the black ichor from uh, Professor's exploding creature <laughs> wiped off the edge. Uh, and as I start to spin it, I will deliver swift and severe punishment to this wolf uh, as I attempt to use final judgment. Um, mm -hmm. I love this part. If, <laughs> Me too. If the attack, oh, I, I guess I roll to attack. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, so you were just- 20. Yep. yep. Oh, yep. let's go. So I start You do 20 spinning. points of damage? Uh, huh? It's a dirty oh, 20. No, 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 no. Yeah. This doesn't do damage. It oh. does some gangster ass shit. <laughs> I start to spin uh, my great axe in one hand uh, as the blade arcs and spins <laughs> like a blender. Uh, and I walk just to the side of the wolf, and as it's arcing <laughs> one more time, as it spins, I catch the end of it in an arcing uh, flame slash. I crash like a guillotine the blade down on the neck of the wolf. Uh, and it has to make a successful... Do you want to DM the session? You're doing great. <laughs> no, I'm really excited. I can get I up. I read this ability, and I was like, let's fucking go! Listen, I've been thinking about this moment. <laughs> All fucking day. Yeah, there really uh, were drugs in that The team. moment I yeah, there were drugs in that thing. Uh, as I cast Final Judgment. Do you want your players to be excited about their character? Uh, Get the Crooked Moon. The Crooked Moon. 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 All I know is I'm about to guillotine the fuck out of this wolf. And it's going to look up me okay. all the goddamn eyes it wants to, but it's not going to happen for long. So, uh, <laughs> if the attack hits and the target's hit points are below one half, their one quarter, mm -hmm. their maximum hit points, which I assume we're in that realm. I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. It must make a con saving we'll throw. We'll find out. We'll find out. It must make a con saving throw against your spell save DC. Uh, on a fail save, the target's head is severed from its body, instantly killing it. Uh, what is your constitution mod, or what is your modifier, your spell save DC? Like, it's probably like 25. It's Should, probably um, not. Spell DC 15. Rolled a 13. Oh, oh, I mean, that's very appropriate. <laughs> <sighs> you watch as this happens, and with a sickening slice, the head is completely severed from Let's the wolf's body. Um, Taishen is completely covered in a gush of blood as the arteries um, in the neck are severed and it just sprays all over you. The whirring of the blade that's spinning catches the blood in all of your friends are completely <laughs> coated in this windmill of a bloodbath. As you I stand there watching, the above me as, as the head falls, you watch as the <laughs> eyes continue to move, oh, wait. as if something else is controlling them. Oh, this is so, oh. so Before fun. they finally oh, no, go dark, and it lands with a thud on the ground. My ancestors are smiling on me. <laughs> the funny Can part about that, same? I gotta tell you, I had one hit point left. Oh, shit. Well, uh, <laughs> you got uh, that counts, that counts. I don't know what to fucking Our tell you. Our first final judgment. <laughs> yeah. Right. Very cool. You too could bring final judgment to your team. The Crooked Moon, we are less than 9,000 dollars away from being the fifth biggest team. Really? Oh, shit. Shit. Of all That's time. crazy. Oh, you are only 9,000 dollars away. Oh. I mean, the fifth biggest TTRPG Kickstarter of all time. It's Bourbon time. TheCrookedMoon.com. If you're liking these spells, these subclasses, this is the alpha playtest. We are, you got all this shit coming. All right, and with Thanks that, game. with that, it is Caprice's turn. <laughs> that was me, I was so excited. <laughs> you still hear this tune, even though like I've mostly stopped whistling. It's still like running like an earworm in the back of your head. Anyone who still has their bardic die, that is, um, knowing that I'm playing a joyful tune. The emotion is rising up within you, even in the heat of battle. You are uh, uh, having a good time about it, <laughs> and I'm just looking, just sort of tapping my foot and uh, uh, waiting to see the spirits emerge. And uh, in the meantime, I'll just be like, "Oh, there are only only two uh, uh, wolves left. This is dire." <laughs> and I will I will blow a very loud whistle and targeting right here I'm just gonna cast shatter classic d and d stuff uh, I will make it a, a piercingly loud sound mm. um, both of them need to make a constitution saving throw my DC is in bold right here 16 potentially a whistle only a constitution dog saving throw oh, for both I rolled a three yeah. and a 17 so um, two fails four passes okay uh, I'm going to do 11 points of thunder damage on a failed save and half as much on a successful one. So five. What was in that muffin? 
<laughs> you watch as uh, as Caprice does this. You see as some of the bones from the dead dire wolves uh, pop and break and shatter, piercing into their flesh as well. Um, as they uh, take a significant amount of damage, they um, both of these dire wolves uh, begin looking around um, nervously for a moment. Uh, before their heads slowly turn as if against their will and once again start staring at all of you. Damn. One of them gives you a little wink. I plant my great axe <laughs> and the edge of my great axe into its Shepherd. skull. Uh, I cheated last round. I didn't hide behind a tree. I didn't have any bonus actions left, so I'm still just standing out here. <laughs> That's okay. Going on. They were still gonna do what they were doing last round right. anyway. I'm so gonna start my turn by using Sinner's <laughs> Gamble. Ooh. 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 Roll my bone dice. I got oh, I got two pair. Ooh. Oh, so I'm gonna use one more Sinner's Gamble to re-roll one die and go for the full house. Come on. Ooh. No Ooh. good, but with two pair, I get plus two damage to my attacks. For nice. Ooh, wow. wow. Uh, so then I do will. Do you keep? Do you keep the bonuses? So you attempt no, ten so feet of movement. No, so this now replaces got it, got my it. other. Okay. I no longer have the ten movement. Okay. I have upgraded my bonus for plus two damage. Uh, uh, three nice. three nice. rounds, you said? Three rounds. Unless he does it again. again. Uh, I, get, I get how it works. I'm gonna shoot number four with my spectral voodoo gun. Oh. oh, that's going to be 17 plus 8. That's definitely going to hit. That hits. Which is going to be 1d6 plus 3d6 sneak attack damage. Oh. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And it's 10 hit points left. Uh, 24, 25, 20! <laughs> 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 you, you watch as Shepard takes the gun and lets out a blast. And in an instant, as this wolf is uh, looking between you all unnaturally, its body clearly trying to run away, clearing, clearly trying to save itself, but something else keeping it here watching. Um, he lets loose um, this uh, blast of magic uh, and completely uh, rips this entity apart, or this, um, this wolf apart. <laughs> Just one left. That's my turn. Uh, Monsters one. It's going to. <clears throat> you watch as it's um, similar to the other one. Its body is desperately trying to move away, but it is rooted in this spot. And you see for a moment as its eyes change again, and it clearly becomes the eyes of a frightful, hungry dire wolf. And it looks at all of you in fear, and it turns and it attempts to bolt away. Uh, and it is going to uh, turn and try and run into the tree line. I believe Tag you have the opportunity. opportunity. Oh! <laughs> if you want to. You don't want to! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, send him to Fu Zhao. That's what I always say. <laughs> Good or evil, Fu Zhao will sort it out in the afterlife. Uh. <sighs> he still hits. As long as you have plus eight, you're good. Plus seven. Plus eight. It's plus eight. Oh, um, 13. 10 is its AC. <laughs> 15 <laughs> points of you damage. You can use your bardic inspiration to increase the damage. It. <laughs> 19 points of damage, and I smite it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm it, kidding. it seems to shake off whatever. Um, whatever is holding it here as it sees the horrific scene around it and self-preservation overtakes it as it lets out a yelp and turns and attempts to run. Um, but you, in this moment, take your great ax and you slam it down, severing the body in two. And with a, a loud yelp of pain, the uh, dire wolf falls to the ground dead. And silence spills out around you. And as um, you use your inspiration, uh, and you uh, uh, take the life of this uh, dire wolf. A like cartoon ghost is going to come out, and it's whistling that same tune that you've had stuck in your head this entire time. And because you rolled a four, the remainder, half of that is what you heal. You heal two points because I played a joyful tune and enhanced my bardic inspiration. What? That's so cool. It says Super Mario Brothers Two, Super Mario Brothers Two, Game of the Year. Hey, everybody, uh, do the bar, do the dire wolf. Uh, you all stand on this axe. on this road. From side to side. 
uh, making, you all stand on this road covered in blood. Uh, the corpses of six wolves uh, surround you. I won't make you uh, roll for it. Um, now that the heat of battle has subsided and you're able to um, gain some composure, you look down at these creatures and realize this was far too easy. You've fought dire wolves before and they are harder to hit. They are significantly more hardy. They do more damage. They are bloodthirsty and ferocious. And these were not that. And as you look down at them, you realize that they are emaciated. They are weakened. They clearly have lacked for food. Uh, they are weak. And the state that you fought them in, they were not at their full power. They were clearly not ready for battle, though the way that they approached you and the marks on the carriage would all say otherwise. Something doesn't line up here. Damn! Something doesn't line up here. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I mean, look at the carriage, or what's left of it. I was expecting a challenge. Come on, Professor, where are these werewolves you're talking about? These are just wolves. Halasha. 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 Professor? Professor. Uh, professor isn't, Tommy uh, he professor? isn't here right now. You know, you know how he does that thing? He's doing that thing again. You, oh. as, as you are talking, you're walking, um, it is dark and you do still hear the, um, the sounds of animals in the tree line and you are not in any place to be taking on more wolves. You can only hope that your destination is down this path, but this is not a forest. This is a forest unlike you've ever seen, and you have no idea where you are. So you walk as you talk. All right, uh, Professor's a little uh, uh, out there right now. Let's uh, let's think, uh, Sarnax. Maybe you could take the lead. You're you're good with the woods. You can help us get where we're going. Maybe without too much creepy words and, and phrases. Yes, the old ones drink well. <laughs> that makes two of us. But something is not right. That was not natural. Nothing is natural about this place. Perhaps we will learn more at our destination. I'm certain it cannot be far. Sarnax was wrong. Fuck. It was far. <laughs> you walk for hours. It gets to a point where you begin to wonder if you're ever going to reach a destination. There is nothing here but woods. If a town becomes present, it is in the middle of nowhere, far removed from civilization in every way. And you begin to feel doubt. What if this wasn't the right path? You had just awoken before all of this happened. What if, what if you were supposed to walk the other way when the carriage was knocked over and it was dragged by the horses, you lost your bearings? What if the carriage flipped around and you're going back the way that you had come? What if, what if there was a fork in the road that you missed when you were talking and you didn't, um, you didn't realize it was there? What if a path was obscured by all of the, uh, the underbrush? And as you're thinking these things, you see a sign, a small wooden sign that flops in the wind that shows that just up ahead is a place called Duskvale. Oh, oh, is that, is that a crossroads? Crossroads saved my life once. <laughs> I bet you I never told you that story. Oh, it's just a straight road. <laughs> and it is just a straight road. <laughs> Shepard is correct in this, as you all notice the straight road ahead. You crest a hill, and then you see a beautiful valley spread out beneath you. As the road curves down and nestled in the valley, there is a soft river that runs through it, a small and beautiful autumnal town, Ooh. decked out in the colors of autumn, oranges, yellows, reds, and browns. The houses all seem to be decorated for the harvest. And you see, even from this uh, vantage point, that there are people milling about this place in the middle of the night, but they're not acting like it's midnight or the wee hours of the morning. They're acting as if they had just gotten up for the day. People walking this way and that, taking wares from one house to another, a group of people and children dancing around the town center. It looks like they are erecting some sort of maypole. The entire town illuminated by candlelight and lantern light, and it is beautiful. 
and overlooking all of this, the top of a hill next to a, um, next to a uh, waterfall shining in the moonlight, you see what is very clearly the manor house you had been invited to. In beautiful Gothic style, its turrets raising towards the moon, it stands out in this picturesque scene. It is surrounded by um, hedge fences with a l gigantic wrought iron gate that, that closes it off from the rest of this village. Um, looking towards it, you see um, a large balcony that spreads out from the second floor, two huge um, towers that shoot up the side with uh, parapets and um, stained glass windows. You see that the grounds are beautifully kept. On one side is uh, what appears to be a blood orange orchard, and on the other side, a gigantic garden maze. This house is elegant, rich, a stark contrast to the quaint little town that it um, that it looks down upon from its lofty um, uh, foundation or perch. But overall, the scene is comforting. You can hear laughter and the sounds of music, and it's a uh, it's a nice change from the sounds of the woods. Oh, Professor, tell me we're staying in the rich house. This does appear to be our destination. Hey, <laughs> come on, Miss Oz, this is right. Tell Mr. Me. DeSesto, do you have any of those muffins left? I'm hungry. Here you are. Thank you. Yeah, no, 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 my pleasure. I'll just add it to your tab. What's going on, <laughs> Professor? You, you, you got a tapeworm? You <laughs> stop eating all day. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I just eat. It's a lot of activity. Um, lots, lots to do, lots to do. Is this the house, Victoria? Up there, um, you you are significantly far from it. I'm looking up at it. Yeah, Is okay. it sort just of making on a, sure. Yes, on a hill. There in the distance, I believe that's where we're meant to go. Well, there's your answer, Mr. Morgan. Hot damn! Would you care for some direwolf shank? I removed one of its haunches before we left. It's a bit stringy and dried out. Oh, don't eat well, that. That's how you're gonna get the tapeworm. Come on, you gotta cook uh, that. I know you're right. Food. It is uncivilized. I think that one was covered in the black ichor of the cosmic horror. <laughs> oh! Hey! <laughs> oh, I'm going to the banana! Tastes like habanero! He looks up at you and his eyes are completely blackened out. <laughs> so that's uh, Ravenscroft here in. Duskvale. Duskvale? Mm -hmm. Boot, toot, boot, toot. Must be. <laughs> I'm chambering. I, I, I smell <laughs> for pie. Mm -hmm. in the wind. <laughs> All, um, are we near any of the townspeople? You are. You're so. The town is down here in the valley. You're up here on a hill. You've just oh. come out of the forest. You're looking at the scene. And so during this conversation, you are making your way down. You will eventually get yeah. to the town. So the town's down here. Is the, the is it a manor? Yes. So the town's manor? down here. Then manor. there's there's a uh, water, or there's like a house? small brook that um, goes, that uh, cuts through the town. Like, um, the the waterfall side. that feeds into that brook is on the edge of the cliff where the manor sits. Okay, so it's like us down in the valley and then back up to the Yeah. Okay, cool. And as uh, we had been traveling, because it had been hours, your bardic inspirations would all have faded. And as each one did, another one of you these- You die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because you did, oh, no! as a punishment for not using your you bard against I you die. My, I because every bard survival. hates yeah. it when uh, they they give it out. That's and they call use it a bardic die. <laughs> um, uh, you die. A small spirit would have uh, 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 left like haunting uh, around you, and eventually Ooh. arrived back in the other side of my jacket, and I would have oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Each, each one uh, seemingly an old friend to me. Oh. Well, let's let's carry on. Perhaps we have. Uh, Food, safety, shelter. They, they seem to be preparing for some sort of festival oh. or other form of quaint merriment. Oh, I like the sound of that. It's charming, truly. I regard. I seem to remember that when we invaded uh, Vicky's privacy, that there was some sort of a festival going on, right? In yes. Aunt Rowan, Rowan, in Aunt Rowan's <laughs> uh, honor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go enjoy a festival. That sounds. Pretty delightful. And it is right about <laughs> this time that you find yourselves at the at the uh, entrance to this town, and you see quite a few people milling about. Well, 
you there? Is that there on the, the hill, the manor house of Von Zarvich? Oh, hey! You're, you're not from around these parts, are you? Clearly not. Wow, you look like her type. <laughs> How do you do? Oh! My good lad. Oh, I'm I'm all right. I'm just I'm just taking some I'm just taking some gourds and some pumpkins up towards the town square. We're tonight we're we're gonna we're gonna carve some. Are, are you here for the carving? Charming. My name is Professor Clayton Azran of Miss Halloway University. I'm also the Grand Divine of the of the Ruby Order of Occultic Mysticism, <laughs> and I'm the leader of Mysterium Incorporated. That was a lot of big words. You want to rewind and try that one again? Uh, it I'm is afraid we don't have the time. Wasted oh, breath. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? What are you? Are you? Are y'all lost? We have an invitation. You do to to what? Present him maybe with the letter. Is that? I don't yeah, know. Go ahead. Come on, Miss Azra. Was... I suppose I'll just yes share this private letter. <laughs> well, with I anyone mean, who we come across. Maybe just the seal, perhaps. He looks really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yes. Miss Isaac, the more people you share with, the less private it gets. Just get it out there. Get it over with. Done with. Bang. Surely. Yes, we've been invited by. Is she? She just signed it, Stradonia von Zarovich. We've been invited by Stradonia von Zarovich. <laughs> oh, you've been invited by the mistress? Yes, oh. the mistress. Oh, yeah? What for? I'm kin to her late wife. Oh, he takes his hat off. My condolences, ma'am. Oh, much appreciated. We're, we're about to have a harvest festival celebration for her. She was the kindest, I mean, oh, when she was still with us, God rest her soul, she just, she did so much for the land. I would never seen, I ain't never seen a cleric like her before. Oh, dear Aunt Rowan, just like her. Our harvest festivals were, were the best and she always made sure we had the most fun and the most food and we've missed her. And I, I'm not trying to say anything bad about our, our mistress. I mean, she's she's been grieving the loss of, you know, her wife, a loved one. And so I mean, it makes sense, of course, that she doesn't leave that house and that the city, she can't pay much much mind, but she's making right by us with this festival. We got, I mean, I don't know if you, well, I guess you just got here, so you haven't seen, but we have wagons filled with stuff. We've got pumpkins, we're making pies. Oh. There are all kinds of decorations. We ain't never seen anything like this in the past year. I'm so excited, everyone's so excited. Oh, it's pumpkin great. Pie? Yeah, pie, pie, it's pie. great oh. that y'all are gonna be here for this. Oh, we need some pumpkin pie immediately. I could definitely use some rum to go with that pumpkin pie and a place to kick up my boots. I well, comically lift off of the ground. I'm not. <laughs> 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 Only for 15 feet. Yeah, yeah. this smells. Yeah. It smells. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> Hobo Flight, ladies and gentlemen, in the cooking room. I, I think we have to do it. I mean, <laughs> we do not have to do that. <laughs> oh, Hobo well, uh, well, I'm not going to pretend to know what the uh, contents of your personal missive may be. But if you're looking for a place to kick up your feet, have a nice slice of pie, and um, get acclimated to the town before you uh, have your, I guess, meeting with our mistress, uh, you you would do well to uh, find your way on over to the inn. Uh, Raven's Roost, if you head straight up to the town center, they're erecting a maypole there right now. It's the biggest building there. It's got a sign with a raven and a roost on it. And How pie. convenient. And pumpkin pie. And booze. Oh, lots of booze. Warm fire. You know it. Soft beds. The softest around. Oh, guys, let's go. What are we doing? Shake a leg. Come on, professor. Where is this ancient barrow I've heard so much about? I'm sorry, what? Ancient barrow. I, uh, I know of a barrow. A, 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 a tomb full of... Professor, Countless relics? It's ancient. It's not going anywhere. Let's get a good night's sleep and some I don't, good food. I don't think we got nothing like that around here. I ain't ever uh. heard of some ancient one. I know there's a barrow outside of town, but... Outside of town, you say? <laughs> yeah, Damn I mean, how else, how else are we going to get <laughs> the hay in here if we don't put them in the wheelbarrow? That's oh. not ah, exactly what I meant. There seems to be a miscommunication. Oh, even if you're safe. <laughs> Let's make our way to the inn. I believe we we used to have more than one barrow, but uh, like I said, the town has 
had a rough year with the loss of our other mistress. It looks and it. they have... Hey, we've been working real hard to clean up this place. Well, it's clearly not hard enough. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Right. This so quaint village is a blight upon the land. You <laughs> say that your deceased mistress did so much to the land. I'd hate to have seen this place before she arrived. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You, sir, you What is your problem? You are a gentleman and a scholar, and you have done us a great Dang service it. tonight. Please pardon my friend. Sarnax here, he's not accustomed to the local culture. He spends a lot of time in the wood. You know what I mean? You're covered in egg. And branches I prefer Still? To, to sleep amongst the coarse bark no soft. Well, beds. you're welcome to head on back and into the pie. woods. <laughs> I could use some rest. Let the wolves get you. I ya. think we could all use a hot Delicious. bath as well. I could well, clean up. You keep your friend in check. I, I can be understanding of this one, but no I promises. can't promise the rest of the town folk are going to take too kindly to this kind of talking. Understood. No, no I will do. I'll do my best. He walks over towards you and grabs your hand. I can tell you're a kindred spirit. Oh yeah. When you head on up to uh, the Raven's Roost, oh, we're shake. just gonna, all right, all right. You let them know yeah. that you met Bentley, oh, and that oh, Bentley, Bentley set you up here, oh. all right? Okay. You just let them know that. Keep shaking, all right, take my all hat right. off of the right. other hand. I'm, I'm starting to feel a little dizzy. Thank you for all helping right. mm -hmm. or sinner. <laughs> what? And I just I'm sorry, what, what did you say? Put my hat on, come on folks, let's go. No, I'm sorry, what, what did you say? Just one minute, I have one more question. Did two horses happen to run into this town? No, not that I saw. Ripped to shreds. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, what? To shreds, you said. Well, let's go get some pie. What do you guys say? He looks incredibly I, confused. I can go for some pie. I'll wave uh, my hat uh, as I lead the gang towards the inn where he pointed to, and I look for the signage with the uh, rooster and all that good stuff. Uh, it is Another very... Pie on my mind. It's very easy to, to make it to the Raven's Roost. This town is small. Um, you walk up the small hill that leads to the town center. You see the maypole being erected. You see um, a ton of people here. There are, there are children um, separating um, the sizes of gourds and pumpkins. And um, you see that there are uh, women and men alike um, taking bits of straw and tying them together, creating uh, fetishes and um, uh, a veritable um, uh, flower crowns and um, cornucopias. And you see that they are, they're all working on something together. Uh, and it is, it is quite beautiful. They all seem to be very happy. People notice you and they wave and welcome you to town. Uh, none of them nearly as uh, suspicious as Bentley was uh, when you came into town. Um, seeing you in the town center, they just expect that you're supposed to be here. Uh, as you make your way up to the door of the Raven's Roost, uh, it opens easily and you're immediately met with the smells of spiced pies, of, um, of savory meats and um, forever stews, a fire does uh, roar in the hearth. And this place is empty, but it's being, it's being taken care of. <laughs> this town doesn't see many guests, but it was prepared should it see any. And you do notice that there is a, um, what appears to be a human woman uh, behind the bar. She has a book open on the counter. She doesn't even notice as you enter. Um, as she's flipping through the book and she giggles to herself for a moment. You see her, uh, she, you watch as she blushes a little bit and hides her head and she reads a little bit more and she goes, oh. <laughs> 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 But she does not notice that you've entered. <clears throat> Excuse me, <laughs> oh. Hello, oh, welcome to the Raven's Room. Oh, it's all right. Well, thank you for having me. She closes the book and she puts it in her apron really quickly. I'm going to endeavor to read the cover if, <laughs> <laughs> if I can. And I how, just, are you, I just take a peek. how are you planning to do this? With my eyeballs, I'm trying to perceive the cover. As it, <laughs> can you catch a glimpse before she... Uh, uh, I, I don't have, I don't have magic my ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Roll a perception check. Thank you. That would be my pleasure. 
Oh. If you I don't have inspiration for myself now. If, if you want that, twist it. Twist it. Twist it. We gotta twist know it. the title. Magic Hobo Vision. All right, all right. I'll roll the other one. If you want Hobo Vision. And Magic Hobo Magic Hobo Back on the crooked moon. The crooked moon. <laughs> Also, welcome, Raiders. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Oh. Welcome. Welcome. We are trying to become the fifth biggest TTRPG Kickstarter of all time tonight. We are like eight thousand dollars away. It's not a ton we're in the there. grand scheme of things. And we're also trying to snoop on a pornography book. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're the fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh. It's oh. I was not prepared for you to know the name of this. It's Guns, Germs, and Steel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a pull. Jeez. I haven't thought about that in 15 years. <laughs> Oh god. Oh, oh, holy shit. Oh, the beast of burden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny as fuck. Oh. Yeah, my eyes shoot okay. out like daggers. <laughs> I have to okay. You you read it and and at first you you don't <gasps> believe the name that you see written on the front and you quickly glance at the spine and you see that it is written there clearly. Taste of heaven. The Harry and the Hearthy, a halfling love story. <laughs> uh, we didn't mean to interrupt your uh, casual reading, but uh, we were wondering if maybe you had some space here tonight at uh, your lovely inn. I would love to have you at the inn. We haven't had anyone here in a long time. Oh, I'm Cammy, by the way. It's it's lovely to meet you. Uh, what? Brings you to uh, Dusk Vale. Family business. Oh, well, I didn't realize that anyone here had family from out of town. Um, well, uh, all right. Also, um, pumpkin pie. Oh, I make the best pumpkin pie. Would you like a slice? Technically, oh. no one here has family from out of town anymore. That's oh. exactly right. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, Cammy, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I'm Capriccio de Sesto. She you seems can very Capri- confused for a moment. She's still flush. It's nice to meet you, human woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to meet you, too, tiefling <laughs> man. Which one? I would uh, love to enjoy your pie. Uh, uh, both? Oh, I'm sorry, oh. what? <laughs> your pumpkin pie? I, uh, oh. I would love a slice. <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, make that oh, that's 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 oh, make that three. It does smell yeah. delicious. Delicious. I suppose I could. G- give me a moment, and I will. I, I will yeah, grab. Yeah, I'll grab the pie. Yes. Whole pie. Whole pie. And she she quickly um, she quickly turns and uh, heads into the room behind oh. uh, a swinging door. As she um, you hear her um, fumbling with things, and occasionally she oh, oh get yourself oh. together, girl. Caprice, and thank she you so um, much for bringing up that young woman's pie. It's my pleasure. I mean, you can smell it all the way out. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be a horror session! Ever since I arrived in town, there's nothing on my mind but pie. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh, do you think she's got any cream? I, I mean, I hope so. I, I'm just looking for the pumpkin pie. I mean, did you see the size of those gourds out there? Can't have pie without cream, I always say. Yeah. Wow. And as you say pie. this, she it's uses her hip to swing the door open oh. as she's carrying a tray laden with pie. Uh, here, here's my pie for everyone. Oh. I covered it in my fresh cream, oh, and she puts it down on the table delicious. for you. You know you can't have pie without cream. It looks like the best pie in town. Oh, oh it's delicious. Everyone's had a taste. <laughs> How big were the gourds that made this pie? The biggest that, that were brought in with this year's yield. Oh. Round gourds, big round. Plump, gourds. round. Oh, juicy. Mm. Everyone well, you say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look. I'll look at her, and then I'll look between both the two things, and I'll say, "I suppose that's why they call it the Devil's Three Way." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! There's hair in this. <laughs> you got hair in yours? <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> trade, trade. We go to bed. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we black out. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> we got smitten unconscious by the DM. Yeah. Uh, no, you're not. 
Um, but you do enjoy the pie, and um, you chat oh, with do. Camilla a bit. Uh, Cammy. Oh. She um, she tells you her full name, Camilla Evans. She's been the local innkeeper for quite a while. Um, she welcomes you to town, explains similar things that uh, Bentley had told you, um, and she she sits down with you and en- enjoys some pie alongside you as she. Um, uh, <coughs> endeavors to keep you company. She offers you, um, being guests of the mistress of the town, she offers you the largest suite in the inn, um, the nicest room that they that they possibly have, and um, lets you know that the entire stay is on her. She would, um, she feels sorrow for the mistress and what she has lost, and that it's the least that she can do for the kin of, um, of Lady Rowan, and um, explains that the entirety of the town misses her. Um, you learn a little more about her. You don't remember Rowan much, Victoria. You met her when you were a very small girl, um, and she made impressions. You remember her being kind, um, and that even your father dared not um, uh, dared not say anything crass in her presence. That she was. Cool. That she was cruel as he was, he he made sure to um, <laughs> he made sure to um, to keep himself together in her presence, and that it was very clear that your mother truly loved her. Um, and so it's it's nice to hear the way that she took care of the town. The harvest festival was something that was special to her, and that everyone is very happy. Uh, as last year, you learned the harvest festival did not happen for Lady Rowan was found dead on the day of the festival. It's been, as of the festival this year, it will be exactly one year since her death, which is what this festival is being, um, why it is, um, so much care is being put into it, is it is to honor her and the life that she lived, and it is finally now that Stradonia is able to leave her mourning, that Stradonia has not been um, taking care of the village, she has not been sending the supplies, that the um, the townsfolk have had to fend for themselves, uh, create their own harvests, and that it, the uh, imports that they used to get from all over uh, Druskenwald have... Um, have no longer been showing up. And it is not until recently that Stradania has um, decided to grace the town with her presence again. And that, once again, those imports have started to flow in. They have bread and cheese and wine and all of these things that they can't create on their own. Um, and she seems quite happy. And it is in the course of this conversation that uh, you are now full and happy, and some of you a little drunk, uh, as the door of the inn, um, not slams, but um, slides open, and a shadow um, begins, or a shadow appears in the doorway. The shadow of a tall, lithe figure. The shadow of a woman. She stands there in a beautiful black, lacy, bustle dress. Her dark hair cascading down her back over what is uh, clearly a black velvet cloak that she has clasped around her neck. The symbol of a raven with its wings spread wide. The cloak um, down against her shoulders, allowing her hair to spill over. Her skin is pale. Her eyes are a in this light almost read a pale red. Her lips are a very similar color, stark contrast to the paleness of her skin. A veil is affixed to either side of her temples and it uh, covers the majority of her face, but you can still see these colors piercing through between um, the open areas of the lace. And Cammie immediately clams up and Um, stands up and bows and curtsies and isn't quite sure what to do before she rushes behind the bar and just stands there waiting to be addressed. And then you hear her speak. You answered my letter. You rode on the carriage and you have come to aid me. Was it for love of kin? 
or for coin and mystery. It matters not. I am so happy to have you here in my town. You will not be staying here tonight. Oh, thank God. You will come with me to my manor house. We have much to talk about, or something has happened this day that even I was not expecting. Yes, you will come with me? We will. And I'm so pleased. She moves towards you with this unnatural grace, and she runs her hand <coughs> along the side of your cheek. You look so much like her. The family resemblances, and she grabs your chin and moves your head this way and that. Uncanny. <laughs> you see one lone tear roll down her cheek. It pains me to look at you. And she turns your face away as she looks away from you. She turns around and she moves towards the door. She looks over her shoulder uh, very quickly. I will wait in my carriage. Do not take too long. Of course. And she steps out into the street, and you, all you hear is silence. Every person that was out in the in the courtyard is standing either against walls or still holding what they the tools they were using to carve pumpkins or the flowers that they were using to string uh, flower crowns. None of them moves. It's as if they're all holding their breath as they watch this woman move through the thoroughfare. The sound of her heels um, clacking against the cobbled stone, and you hear as it slowly fades as she walks towards her carriage at the edge of town. Oh. Well, I suppose that is our host. <clears throat> Thank God for not staying here. <sighs> okay, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this place. It's absolutely lovely, but. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of serendipity never hurt. Let's go up to the old rich person's house. Well, if we're invited, uh, certainly all of us, right, are invited to stay with a wealthy person that lives in a gigantic manor on a hill, staying in a dinky inn just seems... No, no, and again, it's there's not nothing dinky. wrong, it's there's not nothing wrong with the inn. Yeah, yeah, we, are, we are absolutely going to <laughs> she, she was in my inn. She was in my inn. Yeah, is everything all right? Uh, you look a little Camilla, stuck. Evans? She has never been in the inn before. Oh. Oh my gosh. Do you think it was too dusty? Yes. No, probably. Oh. Oh. No, 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 Jose. No, no, it's, it's, it's yes. beautiful out here. You can't. No she never comes to town. women such as that. Never comes to town. Care about dust. In the wilds, dust does not collect. I have no idea what you're saying, and I don't really care. She <laughs> was in my, she was in my inn. Oh, you missed the chance to offer her your pie. Oh no. I will. Do you think she I will make sure that she gets this pie. Do you think if I gave you an entire pie, oh, I'm lightheaded. Do you think if I gave her an entire, you an entire pie, you could give it to her? Oh yeah, she's what? gonna and gobble you, that pie right up. When you we come back to town to. for the festival, in case we would, drop one. Would, you, would you tell her how my pie tasted? Yeah, yeah. I mean, would you tell me what she thought of my pie? I will tell. I'm, I will relay the message. Look, I got one look at her, and I can tell. Isn't she beautiful? Pie fan. Yeah. She's so pretty. Big fan of pie. <laughs> She's an she expert. She does have that look about her. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah, give us a pie. We'll, 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 we'll be right her. back. You don't want to keep her waiting. Uh, I, uh, oh, oh, pie. Hey, I'll be right back. Oh, and she at, rushes. Fine, Cammy. She rushes to the back, and you can hear she's stumbling over things, clearly <sighs> knocking things over, uh, as she prepares a basket of two pies. Well, I look at uh, I look at Taishan, and I'll say mammals and their pie. It's good, but I don't understand the fascination. <laughs> Neither do I. Uh, A big old bowl of eggs will do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give it a try. It's fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a rye. Oh. You're just like ro Rocky Balboa <laughs> in it. Uh, yep. uh, quite good. Well, quite good. This all uh. worked out for the best, right? We're going to get a nice place to stay. You get to talk to your ex dead relative's <laughs> ex. And we get close to the barrows with the treasure and all of that good stuff. And we get paid. Oh, we get some. Are you looking for the, the wheelbarrow that 
We only have one left. No, 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 not a wheelbarrow. No. We're looking for barrows, like ancient. Oh, we don't have more than one. The barrow, like the ancient grave. <laughs> Great. Where the uh, old ones reside. Yeah, we're not getting anywhere about? on the barrel front. We should well, be going. What do you mean when you say wheelbarrow? What are you referencing? Oh, it's, you know, a, a, like a small wooden wagon that it's you use to... It's a farming implement. Oh, no, yeah. okay, that's not it. We speak of an ancient tomb. <laughs> no, no, no. I've heard enough of this town. Barrow, it's a tomb. Just mountain. <laughs> we'll be taking the pie. She hands you a basket uh, covered Thank with a, uh, a cloth, and inside of it are two pies. And clearly the biggest and the most beautiful pie. As soon as she hands it to me, I toss it to Caprice into the bandle. <laughs> <laughs> Into the carriage, and you you hear you hear glass shatter. The cream, oh! It's fine. It's fine. Don't it's worry, fine. don't worry. I got it here in my bindle. <laughs> Thank you for your hospitality. You're welcome. Yeah. And I, I'm like walking over to like the shelf or like to her like storage cover, and I'm just pulling out all the eggs. What, what, what are you doing? Do? This was we got, Thank you we got, for being so hospitable. We've got Mrs. so much business to do. The professor says we gotta go. We, I gotta go. We've all gotta go. Cammy, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for your pie. You're, you're, you're welcome. You can have my pie anytime. Well, I'll be back. Great. You all right, Mysterium Incorporated. Roll out. <laughs> Transform and roll out. Let's go. <laughs> Let's, let us go. After you, professor. That's right behind you. We you, go to the carriage. You walk um, through the streets, and people are once again beginning to mill about, but they all look hesitant and nervous. They don't look scared, but almost in awe. As you make your way through the streets, they look at you in reverence, um, knowing where you're headed to. Occasionally, uh, these <laughs> villagers look towards you and just point the way. They don't say anything to you. Um, as you find yourself um, at a small exit on the opposite side of town, uh, a, a pathway leading directly up towards the um, towards the manor house. There is a large black carriage there and a very similar style to the one that picked you up, but significantly more grand, significantly more decorated with uh, gilded golden um, uh, decorations. And this time you do see that there is a gentleman um, who is manning the uh, manning the carriage and um, maintaining the horses. Uh, he nods to you and tips his hat towards you, but doesn't say much as he reaches around and opens the door uh, to welcome you in. You see that Excuse Stradonia me, is sitting inside the carriage. Um, this is quite large. Uh, there's enough room here for all of you to fit on one side together. And with the way she spread her dress out around her, it's very huh. clear that that is her intention, mm. is for you to face her. Uh, and you all make your way into the carriage and take your seat next to her. How do you do, manservant? <laughs> <laughs> you feel like they call him manservant every time we walk into the carriage. They are manservants. I know, not? but it just sounds weird when you do. These are the trappings of civilization. Do not call them manservants if you do not wish me to use that term. All right. Well, we appreciate you your there. hospitality and invitation. I appreciate that you have come. And I wanted to formally offer the services of Mysterium Incorporated. It is uh, this band of uh, excellent, capable individuals that I've assembled over many years that uh, were able to uh, fix problems, so to speak, and um, help you in, in various uh, supernatural ways. And it is convenient, if not altogether uncanny, that in your employ would be Vic Miss Victoria Isaacs. That's right. Yes. She May was- I offer you our deepest condolences. She looks at you for a moment, looks away, and uh, continues to look at Clayton, trying not to make eye contact with you. Rowan spoke of you often. She wanted very much for you to come visit, but we could never find the time. She was a lady of the land, and in a place like this, there was much land to tend to. She would be happy to know you are here now. But it is not for her that I, it is, but it is not for her memory that I have brought you here. And it is imperative that I tell you what has happened. Let us, as they say, cut to the chase. 
Please do. It is one year since I lost my wife. Yes. She flung herself from the second floor balcony and impaled herself on the maypole that was to be used in the Harvest Festival. Oh my. My Rowan was sweet. She would never have taken her own life. For the year prior, she had been wandering the woods when she found an ancient barrel. Buried beneath it, she found a mask. A strange, rotting, decrepit rabbit mask. She would not remove it from her sight. She kept it with her always. At first, I thought she just, being a woman of a hearth and home, I thought that she like the symbology of the rabbit and what it meant. We were lovers first. Mm -hmm. And she had needs, if you understand my meaning. Needs. Yeah. Physical, I, physical I, needs. I do not understand your meaning. Nor do I. I'm glad you understand, for I will not, ex I will not expand upon it. With, with these needs, uh, exacerbated in some way, due to the mask? I will get to this. At first, the mask became a trinket, a token that she carried around with her. And then, she began to want. She began to desire. She began to need. And I was all too willing to provide. Oh. But when she began to wear the mask, things began to change. She would speak to me in a tongue that she never spoke before, a language I did not understand. She began to talk of whispers, of plans, grand plans for the two of us. I would find her alone at night wearing only the mask, speaking gibberish as she looked out at the, at the full moon. She wore an ancient mask of lightly magical uh, properties uh, without knowing anything about it? It was found in the earth. She did not think anything of it, and I was not concerned. When you see the thing, you will understand. And this is the artifact. When I found her impaled upon the maypole, she was wearing nothing but the mask. I removed it from, the from her body myself and have kept it in a trinket box ever since. I do not open the box. I do not look at the mask. I cannot bring myself to see it. Look, I don't want to jump to conclusions. I just want to maybe ask a couple questions, make sure we're all on the same page here. I mean, look. It's not very odd. It's, it's pretty often that the professor sometimes starts talking in weird languages. I've been known to tie one off, get naked, and stare at the moon. <laughs> it's just, you know. Uh, you do do that yeah. quite often, don't you, Shepard? not that often, just, you know, occasionally when, you know, the drink takes me. You always say, oh, it is the full moon. People will be acting strangely. <laughs> this, this may be a thing that you do, but this is not a thing that my Rowan does. All right, I don't mean any disrespect. This is wholly unlike her. It was. She began to journal at first, and then she would write on anything and everything. The library, filled with countless tomes, contained her scribbling, her maddened scribbling. None of it making sense. Most of it I have had burned since, or I cannot look at it. So I ask you this. I would have you look at this mask. See if you can determine anything about it. For I have begun to hear the whispers myself. Whispers, you as say? We na as we near the eve, one year since her passing. Do you I hear fear the old ones? It is not a voice or a <clears throat> language, it is a feeling. I am afraid to keep the mask close to me. I would like to have you inspect it. We will. This harvest festival, 
I fear that last year I did not throw one, for Rowan had passed. I was too aggrieved to continue the festivities. I, I fear we have angered the gods and that this mask is now our pen, it's now punishing us for people have started to go missing in the town. The townsfolk believe that the hungry dire wolves are at fault for taking them, but they are far too emaciated to be eating human flesh. I think it is something else. So, I am throwing a grand festival to appease the gods in honor of Rowan and hope that at least that one problem can be cured. The only thing else that weighs heavy on my heart is this mask. For this evening, I will put you up in her room. You may go through her things, We'll see what you can find. And in the morning, you will give me a full report. For tomorrow night is the harvest. And I must know what is happening with this mask before the harvest is to begin. Or my heart will be far too heavy for me to be able to truly celebrate the life that we shared. In this, do we have an agreement? Yes. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. yeah we're in. We These can are... discuss payment at a later date. Professor. She looks at you and she doesn't even flinch, as it was agreed. Yes. And course. it is at this time that you hear the creaking of the wrought iron uh, gate, this grand gate that opens up between two hedge fences that encircle this entire manor. They open up with, <clears throat> as you can clearly see, no one opening them, just automatically on their own. As they open up, you are led through a gravel pathway that splits and goes around a large fountain with a uh, raven standing there with its wings wide open, its mouth up towards the sky, and a pillar of water shooting out and filling the fountain. It's quite a beautiful scene uh, as the uh, carriage curves around and parks directly in front of the house. Grand uh, marble staircase leads up to the large red oak doors. Um, the the manservant leaps down from his post, opens the door, and carefully helps um, Mistress Von Zarovich out of the carriage, and then steps to the side and allows you to help yourself out of the carriage before he rushes up the stairs and opens the door for her, both of them wide. Um, you are immediately met with the light, a flickering candlelight, this dark, oak interior. It is beautiful and warm and cozy as the light spills out onto the stairs. Stradania makes her way up to the doors themselves before she turns towards you. Her lace, um, her black lace morning gown trailing along the, mar the white marble stairs in a very stark contrast. Uh, and she turns towards you and ushers you inside quietly. I told you men, servant. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't have to say it, though. It's, it's rude. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Von Zarovich, uh, thank you. I appreciate the hospitality. I know we all do. Uh, have a good night. We'll take care of business. I will be escorting you to my dear Rowan's room. And it is there I will return shortly with the mask for you to see. You are sufficiently fed, yes? Yes, we are. Caprice, don't forget the gift. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> Sack of pie. <laughs> this is... Oh, yeah, yeah, pa, 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 It's the tavern girl's pie. It's the tavern girl. Uh, <laughs> Everyone seems she, to love it. Kamala, Cammy Evans. And she, fresh green. You should just call her Kamala Anderson. <laughs> no, Evans. Kamala. <laughs> Kamala Anderson. <laughs> Maybe we should go back to the fucking end. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, she removes the, um, the cloth, and you're all able at this, uh, where you're standing, to look inside. Both of the pies have completely completely turned to mush, the crust everywhere. Um, the cloth is completely covered in the fresh cream. Oh. It is an absolute mess. Forgive I, me. I will send this to the kitchen and we'll have it for dessert. I know mending. 
Johnson, please? And she hands it to the footman. And, um... Yes. <laughs> Why? It's just a name! It doesn't mean penis! Not everything is dirty! I don't know what you're talking about. The main service name is Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna call him Jeeves, and I thought oh, that was man. just too... Oh, too <laughs> Children. Uh, All of sense you. that she would keep a Johnson around. <laughs> <laughs> she. <laughs> Johnson will fix that power. <laughs> She leads you into the house where um, another group of servants um, addresses you. Um, she mentions that she's going to go up to a room. Um, she's going to spend a little time by herself collecting her thoughts and getting herself together, allowing you time to, um, to explore the room, see if you can find anything, and she'll meet you shortly with the mask. Um, it is at this time that she ascends this large curved stairwell and heads towards the second floor of this grand manor. Uh, and the three uh, the three servants there um, to help you, they do not speak, but they slowly lead you upstairs once she has gone out of sight, um, giving her a, a lot of space to move on her own. And um, they eventually lead you up, and instead of taking you to the west wing, which is where she had headed, they take you to the east wing. Uh, you walk down a large hallway that is lined with portraits. And as you're walking through this hallway, you begin to notice that these por portraits, all of them have uncanny resemblances to Victoria. Every single woman in these portraits looks incredibly similar to her. Some of them so much that it looks like it could be a painting of Victoria herself. But all of them are in different garb, um, notating um, different time periods and different, um, uh, different customs and things. Um, clearly, um, generations of potentially Isaacs or, um, or you know Isaac to be her, her father's last name. Um, but I don't think any of you know what Victoria's maiden name is. So that side of her family. Uh, you walk for a long while as you pass um, gilded door after gilded door until you get to the very end and you see these two, uh, this large double door um, set back in an alcove. And the, the gentleman open the door for you and lead you inside. This room is twice the size of the entire inn, which was very small. It was maybe a four or five room inn. But this room itself is more akin to a ballroom than it is to a bedroom. You see in all the way towards the very back, a large four poster canopy bed. You see two large armoires. You see an entire sitting area for tea, a small study off to one side with uh, its own little library nook. And you see a stairwell that clearly leads up to one of the, um, one of the towers uh, at the top of this place. This room is gigantic and everything that would have been here when Rowan was here is still in this room. Not a speck of dust on anything, as if it's perfectly maintained. Well, this is fantastic. All right, gang. Tear the place apart. Uh, no, 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 no. What, are, what do you think the slowest we could do this is? Just really enjoy the space. Just sort of. You heard of the professor. <laughs> <laughs> I find the couch cushion and I tear it apart with my claws. I do my claws. Come on, guys. Gentlemen, be respectful. Yeah. This was my, my dear aunt's room, her uh, space, her private quarters. And we can hold off until we get the mask, but we need to investigate. I mean, there's a mystery to solve. Investigate, yes, but respectfully, tactfully. You know, let's not destroy any evidence or, or, or something that we might be looking for. Come on. Some foul influence drove her to take her own life. Yes, I We have to that. find what that was. Very curious. We will be respectful. <laughs> roll, <laughs> roll a group investigation check. <laughs> investigation is mm. not my strong suit, but that's, I rolled a two. That's, <laughs> uh, that's what I'm a Viking. Investigation. Yeah, I'm, I'm bringing everybody. Oh down. no, I got a one. I'm gonna use a fresh one. I got a zero. A twenty-five. Eight. Eighteen. I got a two. Twelve. 
twenty two. So we got two twos, a a twelve, eight. An eight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and eight. 25, don't forget. I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 18. 18, okay, maybe I comically lean against something that's actually a lever. <laughs> I would say you do have twists. Now might be a time to use them. Yeah, all twists. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. <laughs> Oh, oh, just one other try, another try. I want to comically okay. lean against a lead. There we go. I got a okay. 19. 17. 17. 20 17. Look what do I look like, guys? Look at Rose. You begin looking through things. <clears throat> Victoria, <clears throat> Victoria stops you from destroying anything in the room. So you do not use your claws to tear apart oh, the upholstery oh, or anything oh, of the oh, sort. The um, but you do begin. You do begin to move through the room, all of you taking different areas. Uh, there are doors inset into alcoves here as well. Uh, and then, and you notice that there is a balcony above the bed that leads to more, uh, more books and uh, little reading nooks, where it was very clear that she, in her free time, enjoyed uh, the pleasure of reading. Uh, you may even be able to find a taste of heaven, uh, the Harry and the Hearth, uh, the Hearthy, um, a halfling love story. Uh, if you were to look here, or maybe the only really? copy of in, of existence was here and somehow found its way to the inn. It's oh, hard shit. to know. Um, but you all find your different places to look. There is, uh, There are two um, guest bedrooms that lead off of this place, or off of this large room, as well as a large um, bathroom, which is more like a bathhouse in um, in its size, uh, a large pool sunk into the middle of the floor, um, sitting areas and places to enjoy the steam and the leisure, um, potentially massages, uh, a couples veritable spa. Um, huh? Couples massages. Couples massages for sure. Uh, and it is quite beautiful as you all mill about um, looking for things. Uh, Caprice, you are not interested in looking for things. You've had a long day, you're tired. You lean up against the uh, you lean up against the fireplace and rest uh, rest up against it. And as you as you um, as you uh, lean your head back, you accidentally knock over a bookend. Oh. And I almost hand is like <laughs> catches it. But not hand. not in that way. You you knock it over to the side, but instead of clattering down, it stays there, clearly on a hinge of some sort. And you realize that you could pull this all the way down. Huh. <laughs> and as you do, you notice that the stairwell that um, leads up into the tower begins to spin and rumble as it now leads down. Oh, oh. way to go. Hey. Hey, no problem. Lazy oh, tiefling drunks. Tief- uh, yeah, tiefling drunks, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I, I found, I found uh, 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 there's, a, there's a secret passage. Kinkies, you've done it. <laughs> what? Excuse me? Huh? <laughs> the professor just used his signature trademark. <laughs> he used the I'm trying to time we have known him. Oh, his catchphrase. Oh, okay. Kinkies. Even when we discover a clue, uh, I explain uh, kinkies. How can I forget? The professor always says kinkies, you've done it. Are you saying kinkies? Yeah, well, kinkies. Oh, come on. It's a yeah, nonsensical silver. You've heard dozens and dozens of times. Of course. Times. Will you stop saying that? <laughs> Kinkies, he's done it again. Here we are, Mystery Incorporated with the old King. Mysterium. Mysterium oh, Incorporated. Me. Mysterium. Similar but legally distinct. You're having Mysterium. this conversation as you all go down yes, the stairs. Yeah. And we go down in the trademark manner where one of us goes up and then all of us bunch up and then yeah. and tumble down at the same time. No, of course, that's exactly what happened in this horror one shot. Um, and so you you spill out onto the, um, onto the land of what is very clearly a small study. Um, this is significantly more intimate than the um, than the elaborate study that was upstairs, one that was clearly made for show. This was a private place that she could go to and get away from everything, a place potentially Shredanya didn't even know about. Um, there is a small, uh, small bed in here of uh, very humble means uh, that was that had clearly been slept in and not made. 
uh, which is kind of what leads you to believe Stradania had not seen this place. The immaculate um, cleaning that had been done upstairs, none of that has been done down here. There's a layer of dust on everything. Uh, there is a desk with a, with a small wooden chair. Uh, you see that there is a bottle of ink that had been recently used and left out is now dried up and flaking. Uh, the quill still inside of it as if she had been the last time she'd been in here, she had been writing. Um, and with Clayton's 25, uh, you very easily find the hidden compartment in the desk and you begin to rummage through scraps of paper, all of them having just little bits of <clears throat> writing writing on them. None of them full pages of anything, but just little snippets of thoughts and things. What you find are these. Ooh. The mask is old and it hums to me. Finding it was a blessing. I feel as if it called to me, as if it wanted me to find it. You find another one. Wearing the mask makes me yearn for Anya, my love, my lust. My need for her grows daily, but the mask, when I am wearing it, I am insatiable. Yet another. I hear it whispering to me when it wants I hear it whispering to me. What it wants, I cannot even write the words. I could never hurt my Anya. Never that way. And then another. She will forgive me. The whispers quell my fears. Holding it is ecstasy. The pleasure it brings us is otherworldly. She must forgive me. She will forgive me. And then a final note. This one you find very close to the ink. This was clearly the last one that she, that she wrote. You can see the splotches of ink on the bottom of it. The festival is underway. Her smile is perfection. Her pain will be immense, but our future together is eternal, as is our love. It whispers to me what is to be, and I cannot deny it. I cannot let go. She will forgive me. She must forgive me. The whispers do not lie. Well, we've been doing this for a long time. And it's never a good sign when it looks like one half of a couple has some sort of a secret half of their life. Very curious. Whispers from the beyond or from the mask itself. Compelled to suicide. Increased carnal desires. Perhaps because of the rabbit motif. A symbol of fertility, maybe. Yes. Very strange. And they said she was a harvest cleric, was she not? Yeah, that's what you were told. Hmm. The mammalian desire to reproduce indefinitely, overpopulate, mm -hmm. as is their hallmark. Anya, presumably a pet name for Shredanya. Kinkies, you've sold it. <laughs> Kinkies, quite right. It is strange. The voices wanted her to hurt Stradonia, kill her, join her in death, it seems, based on the last entry. Damn, that is morbid. It is. So what happened? I mean, it's hard to say, but presumably she killed herself so that she did not get compelled to kill Stradania. And... Perhaps breaking whatever spell was upon her. Perhaps. Perhaps. Although it seemed like it was very intentional, part of a plan still. Just maybe she wouldn't have to do it. Perhaps waiting for her own time to come, Stradania's. is very strange and quite coincidental that we come almost exactly a year after this happened. Hmm. Very strange indeed. On the eve of the festival, the uh, night she took her own life. This has the stink of witchcraft. It does. There's power and sacrifice and death. And blood. And, and blood under the right moon. Under the right stars, the right season. 
before you start burning anyone, let's just figure out exactly... Burning, that is not my thing. Well, that's why I reference. sorry, I meant just to turn to the inspector. Why does everyone think I want to burn oh. things? You I hear would... a rap on the door clearly from upstairs as it echoes <clears throat> down the stairwell. Oh, we gotta get back up, come on! Let yes. me just make sure that there aren't any other secret entrances. <laughs> no? <laughs> Stay okay. between us for now. Yes. It didn't Agreed. seem like she knew about this when we came down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. let's go, let's, let's go. go. Our feet spin for a while without moving. <laughs> and then you, go, <laughs> yep. uh, you make your way upstairs and you write the bookend, closing off that section of uh, the uh, of the the turret of the tower, and you all immediately lean against walls, um, uh, cross your arms, and go at a forty five degree angle, um, just as Stradonia waltzes into the room. Um, she Death carries uh, an ornate <laughs> box in her hands, um, and she she doesn't even look at any of you as she makes her way uh, over to the sitting area in front of the fireplace uh, and sets the box down on the uh, the table there. This is the mask. I cannot leave it with you, but I will remain. I will not bother you while you take a look at it. I will allow you 10 minutes. 10 minutes only. Ooh, 10 minutes. For this thing, I believe, is evil, is wicked. And I do not think anyone should touch it for longer. All right, well, I got 10 minutes. Uh, out of all of us, uh, the one who is probably most capable and understanding of whispers in general, most mentally sound, most intelligent, got to be the professor. Is He's the one. He knows about it. You know about the arcane. You're very knowledgeable. Yeah. You're mentally there. We're not worried about you going off the deep end. He's confident. He's stable. He's consistent. <laughs> And this puzzle's clearly beyond the rest of you, so yes, I will take a look immediately. Uh, you couldn't pay me to touch that. She <laughs> reaches into her bosom, and on a long golden chain, she pulls out an ornate key. Uh, she leans forward, and you, uh, Victoria, notice as the dress parts a little, and um, you can see the blush rising on her chest. She's clearly nervous as she unlocks the... Um, the box and pops it open and inside you find a disgusting withered rabbit mask. It looks almost as if it's made from some sort of leather, some sort of skin. And it's been pulled, taut and molded over a face. It has holes in it and you can see what appear to be stains of caked on brown old blood. Um, it is hideous. And holding it, touching it, you feel a thrum of magic. Oh, don't touch that, Caprice. Hobo, hand it over to the professor. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to, like, whistle while you do that? Uh, as I, as uh, uh, I see it, uh, I feel a great sadness. Uh, I, I think of uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Von Zarovich's plight of what's happened to her um, ex-wife. I think of all of this, this tragedy and I start to whistle a very sad song to inspire the professor as he goes to solve this puzzle. inspiration and I'm playing a sorrowful song. So you die. <laughs> if he doesn't spend it. If you don't, if you if you don't, don't spend it, it you, you die. die. Oh. Whoa! <laughs> uh, the hobo is connected to like a ghost who has like the, the, the comical like five o'clock shadow and a cigar. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first thing I would do is just attempt to at least face value, investigate, and try to sense in an arcana kind of way or well, even an arcana investigation check. kind of way. 25. Um, you 
you feel that there is a magical power to this. It <laughs> is whatever magic is tied to this is far beyond something that an initial inspection is going to be able to determine. But you can tell that this is not a standard magical item. This is incredibly powerful. Um, and that there, it has the lingering remnants of a curse. There is, there is a curse upon this mask. What a terrible night for a curse. Mm. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> it is. I will need to delve deeper to understand more about the nature of this curse. You have eight minutes left. Curio, my case will flip open and open up, and then the that tome that I described will sort of float out slightly. And I'll wave my hand, I'll, it'll open up <laughs> to a specific page. Do I hear whispers holding this? You, not necessarily whispers, but you, yeah, actually roll a uh, wisdom saving throw. I should have had you do that oh immediately. Oh my god. That's pretty good, dread. I'm proficient. That's oh, a dread. That's worse. Yeah. You've got an inspiration, though, buddy. I do. I I'm going to use it. Uh... Uh, I'm going to make the rule you can't use inspiration on a dread. Oh, yeah. That's fair. <laughs> 11. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are holding this thing, and you feel the magical thrum of it. And it starts to feel like it beats with your heart as your heart starts to race. You feel different, strange. You look around you and you see Stradania's heaving bosom as she's slowly uh, placing the key back between her breasts and you are overcome with lust. Mm -hmm. You look towards Victoria and you are disgusted by the feeling that you have as you think about how beautiful she looks in that dress. Oh. <laughs> And you are yeah. overcome with a sense of lust for a moment as you turn towards Shepard and you see his rippling biceps as they are, um, as he is uh, <coughs> messing with the rum bottle. And you realize you've never had these feelings for any of these people that you uh, have traveled with for so long, but every single one of them includes Sarnax's tail. I'm not a scaly. Looks sexual. Oh. <laughs> Sessions quadraps. What did you call it? Um, it, it only... <laughs> Quadceps. Quadceps. It, it only lasts for a second <laughs> before you are able to shake it. You have not been holding on to this thing for long, but you immediately think back to these um, scribbles that you found, <clears throat> and you can understand why she was feeling what she was feeling. Being in contact with this thing for long periods of time, you imagine would and could easily overtake you. And though you can't make out words, you do hear... I give a pillow and put it in my lap. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I don't like yes, the way yes. you're looking at us. You all right? No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, this is. Ooh, ooh, I just got a little. Professor Bewilder, no, are you crossing your legs? <laughs> Suddenly, uh, Professor. I just. I'm trying to investigate, all right? Let me concentrate, all right? Is your hat getting bigger? The hat starts to the fall. The hat rises up. The hat rises up. The hat rises up. The hat rises up. He stands up, he's like, I got it. So the hat sticks straight out. No, 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 I'm giving you a standing ovation. Oh. There it is. Uh, Kinkies. 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 I've got it. <laughs> you Holy do. shit. Uh, this is not what I expected. Uh, but I, has that night. surpassed? I don't feel the lust yes. anymore. Yeah, it, was, it was just a moment, um, but you imagine that if you were to continue to hold this, uh, it would become harder and harder to resist those urges. That is merely a minute of being in contact. This is a powerful artifact. Uh, I will place my hand over the uh, tome and sort of underneath the cover will glow with ruby light and I will say Halishna 
Kiliki Lile Akuna Natum Halishna, and then I, my eyes will open up and f uh, fire with bright violet light as I cast. Uh, what is it called? Violet Sight. Violet Sight, thank you. Line. <laughs> it lasts a minute. Uh, after chanting in the strange shit. language, my eyes burst in a violet flame. This allows you to see things they really are. Uh, and several moments into the future. When I cast the spell, I can use madness points to alter the effect. So I'm going to spend three madness points. Uh, cause I still have some left even though I blew my load earlier. Oh my god. Uh, wrong with I'm gonna gain a portent it's for Friday 10 minutes. Night. Okay. So if I can Freaky gain a, Friday, a, a, a portent or anything that I can learn about this for the next 10 minutes, um, I would just be full blown like being consumed by, uh, the, the being that I'm reaching out to, uh, to learn what I can about the mask. We all watch in silence as you put a pillow on your lap and then your eyes ignite into flames. <laughs> you, how, how long are you taking? Uh, well, it, it lasts up to, oh, one minute. Yes, one minute, sorry. Longer, I believe, I believe well, but but I gained the portent longer. for 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah so we, you've used the, just, to, just to explain, I should have explained yeah. this for you, we were trying to um, use that as like shorthand for like literally the uh, portent where you roll a 20 and you get to, for 10 minutes, half oh, back, yeah. where you can use it kind of like a divination thing. Okay. It was a shorthand instead of typing out the whole thing. Of, uh, we haven't we haven't like uh, full language it. Yeah. It's just plain plain English. Um. Well, then I'll see what I can see. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Anything you'll give me for that, I guess. You clearly feel that this is tied to an entity. That there is some direct connection to an entity. I will say that there there would be no way for you to have an understanding of this entity, but that given uh, additional connection with it, if you were to hold this for too long, it would become bound to you, and you would be linked to that entity. I'll I'll drop it. You all right, Professor? What do you make of it? It is a cursed object. It is bound to some sort of entity. Some sort of creature, being, god, I don't know. Uh, but with enough contact, there's nothing you can do. This is probably what happened to your wife. <laughs> do you know anything about the nature of the god or goddess that she worshipped. I just simply know that it was, she referred to her as the Harvest Mother. Is there any reason we can't just destroy the mask? Set things right? I have attempted to burn it and it will not burn. Mm. Dang. I have had other clerics come to attempt to cleanse it and they are repelled and they are wounded in the process. Oh, yeah. Quite powerful then. Yes. Mm. No burning. Yes. I will ask you to place it back into its box. I should return it to safety. Uh, 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 Perhaps uh, not you, Professor. Yeah, hold on, hand that thing, come on. All right. Well, All right. what if I just, just once? No, no. Place no, it no, no, no. into the box. Why shouldn't I have it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Could you tell us more about where she found the mask? Behind the, behind the village, just across the way from the waterfall, is an opening thicket. It was not one that we had found before, because the entrance to it was covered by the cliffside. But if you walk through a small cave, it leads out into a thicket. And she found it on a whim, three days prior to... Not last year's Harvest Festival, but the one prior to that. And is this near the barrow? That is where she found the barrow. <gasps> and it was, it had a stone door that should have been, f I have not seen it personally, but I was told that it, the stone door was far too big for her to open. And yet when she approached it, she felt like she could. And as she slid the stone door aside, she was able to walk into this mound of earth. 
The only thing inside was a ring of stones, and in the very center, a, a stone pedestal with this mask sitting in the very center. She thought it quaint. She is the kind, was the kind of woman who could find joy and beauty in anything. It did not surprise me that she would fall, uh, that she would find affection for this ugly mask. I should have known. It was all too coincidental. We will investigate the barrow after some rest. I do believe that is the best course of action. We should sleep tonight. And in the morning, I will outfit you with the carriage and it will take you to the entrance to the barrel. I will accompany you if you would allow. For afterwards, if we are able to, maybe we just return the, the mask and we, we block up the barrel and we, we block up the cave and there is no way for anyone to find it ever again, at the, at the very least. I find myself too drawn to it to be able to do it on my own. I need your help. If that is what is deemed the final course of action. And then afterward, afterwards, in the, the afternoon, we will engage in the Harvest Festival and we will honor my sweet Rowan. Sounds like a plan. Agreeable. Then she locks the, the box and she um, pulls it into her arms. I will leave you then, allow you to sleep. Get as much rest as you can. I will wake you early in the morning, for our task is going to take all day. Good Thank night. You. Good night. It is lovely to meet all of you, especially you, Victoria. She reaches out and she clasps your hand. I'll bring her hand up to my mouth and just lightly kiss her. Uh, you hear her, um, the, the sound that she makes is a sigh, but there, it is laced with um, just a bit of a moan as um, she flushes and pulls her hand to herself. Rest well. I will see you tomorrow. And she quickly scurries out of the room and um, you can hear the sounds of her heels clacking on the, um, the wooden floor as she makes her way out of the uh, east wing and towards the west. <laughs> More eggs? The whole thing's considered. The harsh mother makes a good apple. <laughs> so now what? I think exactly what we said. We, we rest up and prepare for a trip in the morning. To Say see no what. more. Well. You lean up against the wall and your back hits a switch that- no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, when we were in the private study in the writings that we found, was everything in a language that we, like everything was mm -hmm. just written in common? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you didn't find anything in any strange languages. Well, that's good. Uh, we all know it's not gonna be so easy to just return this thing, right? Surely there's gonna be some kind of fight we're in for. Things like this want to be unearthed. If it was found once, it aims to be found again. You know what that means? Witches. Witches. <laughs> and with that, you all fall asleep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps it is the... the <laughs> that a good steak burning. <laughs> Perhaps it is the old ones of the land reclaiming this garish village to the earth. <laughs> <laughs> nah, sorry, Nix. But you, you do, you, you talk about this a little bit and you all eventually find yourselves, um, some in the extra bedroom, some in the large bed, some asleep on the various sofas and chairs. Uh, you Somehow find your own, sleeping the entire some, night. yeah, some stand sleeping the entire night. Uh, but you do eventually find, um, uh, you do eventually find sleep. I need you all to roll a perception check. Ooh. Ooh. There's my I got another two. Yep. A four? How could you? Perception? All mm -hmm. of us? Fuck. Oh, Colonel. Oh. Oh, oh it's oh, plus four, so I got a six. I rolled the toe dice. 21. 
I don't know if we have any twists left. Do we have twists left? Um, no twists on this one. Oh. So just, just, just a six for me. Six? Yep. Jesus. Yep. <laughs> Twelve. Eighteen. Uh, it looks like 19 was the highest roll. Yep. Uh, yep. Four. Victoria, you are jolted awake by the sound of heels clicking on the wooden the wooden floor outside the door. You think to yourself, I should wake up the rest of the group, but you feel almost compelled to make your way to the door and just take a peek first before alarming anyone. You had a long trip and there's no need to worry anyone, should it be nothing. This house is filled with servants. It could easily be someone relighting candles or beginning the day's work. It's best to check and see what could possibly be happening here as you make your way to the door and you slowly open it, making sure not to make any sound whatsoever. As you step out into the hallway, <laughs> uh, as you step out into the hallway, the you it takes a moment for your eyes to adjust to the darkness out here. The room was thoroughly illuminated with the fire uh, roaring in the hearth and all of the lamps that had been dimmed, but you had forgotten to um, to fully extinguish as you all uh, fell asleep um, unintentionally, um, busy reading and speaking to each other, etc. And it takes a moment for your eyes to adjust before the moonlight being the only thing that's illuminating this hallway becomes enough light for you to see. As you look down one side and see nothing, an empty hallway, you look towards the other, and at the very end, you see what is a feminine figure in a white lacy negligee, standing, staring up, at the portrait of Sredanya von Zarovich. Just standing and staring. She doesn't move. The wind that comes in through the window that clearly leads to the second floor balcony whips at her dress and with one strong burst blows the negligee off of her body and she doesn't move as she stands there fully naked in the moonlight, staring up at this portrait. Kinky. That's scary. That happens. Yeah, that happens. Um, <laughs> judging, like, can I see her her hair or anything like that? Like the color of her hair? Is her hair. Like? Her hair is tied up into a loose bun at the back of her head. Um, it is in a similar curly fashion as Stradania's. In the light, it almost looks silver, but you know with the way that moonlight can shine onto black hair, it can look silver or blue or purple. It's hard to tell, but why would Stradania be standing here, staring up at her own portrait? It seems strange, mm. but the figure could easily be Stradania's. Tall, lithe, Beautiful, bodacious, bodacious. Mm. curvy, mm. <laughs> supple thighs. Yeah. Dying. Ooh, pass me that hat. Amble <laughs> rear. Hips out to here. Ample rear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me. Um, I would. How far away am I? Uh, you're about, I would say, thirty feet. I would want to kind of quietly walk down the hall. Um, I would leave the door just just cracked to the room, but not wanting to wake. Um, you know, wake anyone, and I would softly call out, Stradania. You call out the name, and this hallway is empty aside from these portraits, and your voice almost echoes down the hallway towards this entity. You watch as the shoulders stiffen for a second. The body does not turn, but the head does. And God, no. staring at you is not the face of Stradania. Fuck. Or if it is, it's covered by a disgusting, dilapidated rabbit mask. Oh. As the head turns and looks towards oh. you, it cocks to the side. As the body turns and um, shifts towards you, um, fully uh, 
standing fully proud in its nudity. It looks towards you for a moment, the head cocks from one side to the next and twists and looks around. The mask only covers the nose and up. The mouth opens and a dark black void appears as you hear it begin to scream and wail. I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> you unironically might just die here. No, Whoa. thank you. That'd be wild, dude. Full circle, back to Death House. Natural swing. Oh! Dread. Yeah. Oh! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Get a good weight. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh! You begin to feel your Damn. consciousness fade from you. You blink your eyes, but the sound of this screaming is overwhelming you. It's causing this strange pounding in your head, and all the while, you feel lust rise up inside of you as you stare at this naked woman looking at you. This is clearly not Shradanya von Zarovich, but who is this? As all of a sudden, the body, this woman, rushes straight towards you, oh. as if she's going to rush through you. Oh. You can't do anything to stop it as you feel your body crumble and land on the ground. And as you feel like she is going to collide with you, she pivots unnaturally and rushes straight out the window, glass shattering everywhere, as she lands like some strange, monstrous beast on the balcony and then hurls herself over the side. You watch this as your heart beats once, twice, and then blackness as you fall to zero hit points. <gasps> oh! Wow! Some fucking banshee shit. Oh. That is some fucking banshee shit. I need to <laughs> You all wake up in the morning to the sound of a scream in the hallway. <gasps> You rush, you you get everything that you have together as you rush out into the hallway and you see Stradanya standing there in her uh, in a black dressing gown, clearly a dressing gown of mourning, as she's standing over the unconscious and what appears to be lifeless body of Victoria. She's holding her hand over her mouth as she's looking shocked and horrified. Uh, she she reaches down to to touch Victoria to to shake her to wake her, but she she hesitates. She looks scared. She doesn't even notice as you you walk out into the hallway. It's she almost looks like a woman caught in a memory as she stares down at this girl who looks so much like her ex. Her 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 dead wife, crumpled, oh. dead on the floor. But she powers through it, she shakes Victoria's shoulder and she winces, imagining that Victoria will not wake. But you do. You slowly come to your heart beating slowly. Over the course of the night, the, um, the death that had been forced upon you never came. Mm. Whether it was something you ate, or something in this house, or a trinket that you wear around your neck, or your sanguine powers, it's hard to tell. But the death that tried to take you was unsuccessful, and you were waken, you were awoken from your dreamless slumber. If you lie on the floor, Shradanya immediately begins to sob as she crumbles to the ground and pulls you into her arms, and she holds you and cries into you. My, my Rowan, my sweet Rowan. Ron, my baby, my darling. Please, please, don't cry. It's, it's Victoria. It, it's not Robin. Robin, the night. And she, she pulls you forward. I, I am so, I'm so sorry. My, my apologies. And she gets up and she stands on her feet and she looks away as she begins to wipe her tears. I, I don't know what came over me. Are you feeling all right? My, my party. I guess a potty, but I was trying to say party. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fine because she's sending shitters up your spine right now. So oh, shitters up my spine. Besides, you all right? <sighs> you okay? No, you, I mean, she she pulls her robe over her, covering up her her. Um, I don't even look respectfully. Great. Besides, <laughs> are you all right? Yes, but last night I was woken. Mistress, I'm sorry for what I must say. I, I believe I saw Rowan or, or some version of her. 
What do you mean? I I heard something in the hallway and I went to, to see what it was about. I, I thought I saw you standing in the moonlight, but it was something dark. And it wore the mask. <sighs> Lee, I was coming to, to wake you because the mask has vanished. It is no longer in its box. I woke up this morning and the box was open. The key had been ripped from my neck. And you see the you see lines on either side of her neck where the metal had uh, bit into her skin as it had been ripped from her neck. Um, so it wasn't a dream. <laughs> we must go to the Barrows as soon as we possibly can. It is there. It came from the earth and wishes to return to the earth. I cannot imagine anything else. We spoke of where we planned to take it, and I think it returned there for a purpose. Are you certain that Rowan is deceased? I am positive I found her body on my own. Where I saw her. is her body now? In the customs of our people, she was burned on a pyre, mm. and her ashes were thrown into the wind. What if this is just some kind of malevolent spirit or some sort of remaining echo that just wants the mask? Tricks are to, to your mind, but perhaps, perhaps you seem, is she unharmed, clearly? She seems like, to be unharmed, yeah. You seem okay. It felt so real. It, it shrieked, it rushed at me. It jumped onto the roof. Visions from that cursed thing. Manipulations of evil, and it's not done what it came to do. We have to hunt it down and destroy it. I, I will quickly have the carriage prepared, and we will head there with all due haste. If there is anything you need to do, anything you need to prepare before we go, we will leave in ten minutes. Will that give you enough time? Oh, I'm ready. Yes. I've got everything I own right here. Let's go. <laughs> I just need to consult. Then let me dress, and I will meet you outside at the carriage in ten mm -hmm. minutes. And she right. rushes to each of you and grabs your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to help me. Thank you. Of course. This is why we do what we do. And I will kind of go back into the room privately if I can, and I'll pull the pearl out again. And I will go cuckoo bananas, <laughs> staring Great. into it, and roll uh, my yes. uh, going cuckoo. The crooked bananas. moon. You can. You two can enjoy the subclass feature cuckoo bananas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have much choice here. Okay, I'll go with this one. I feel as if this is pretty open and shut mystery. The restless dead. Mm -hmm. Things that have been unearthed that should have stayed buried. We have dealt with this time and time again. Man, well, one more time can't hurt. It should be fairly easy. I'm not sure about that. No? Sarnax. Why is that, Professor? This isn't just a spirit. This is something greater. Some kind of being. As an essence, power. It's not just a spooky, spooky ghost. I see. I'm just trying to drop quotes that our fans might remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's always something that holds the leash of a witch. Mm. That's right. Do you suspect that? This Rowan was a witch. It is impossible to say whether it was Rowan or the effects of something found out at the Barrows that corrupted her, but she was clearly powerful. Those that live here worshipped her in their own way for what she brought to the land and how she tended to it. Maybe a reflection of her power cast back at her in the mask corrupted her greatly. Either way, if it is her spirit or another's, we will put it to rest for good. 
That we will. I'll take one apple for the road. I will also take one apple for the road. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get packed, ready to go, and head out immediately. You take the ten minutes that you were given, and you, uh, for the sake of brevity, uh, rush out of the house and into the carriage. Dradanya is not in a talkative mood. She does have the box that um, the mask should be in. She shows you that it is not there. Mm. Um, and But she does bring it. For what purpose? It's hard to know, but maybe for posterity's sake is that's where um is that's where her love rowan had kept it mm. or maybe it's to put the mask into before you close the barrows but she has it with her all the same as the uh as the carriage makes its way back down the pathway and instead of heading towards the village it skirts to the left and around the village mm. pat over a over a um cobbled bridge uh you're all misted by the waterfall as you ride along the edge of the sheer cliff face until you come to an area of overhanging vines where the carriage stops and you all get out and she shows you the entrance to this cave. It's very small and it does lead to the to a small outcropping on the other side. And it is here that you see it. The barrows. A large earthen mound in the very center of this circular outcropping in the middle of what should be a mountain. Mm. Spiral sign or spiral symbols mm. carved into the earth itself all over this place and one incredibly large stone blocking what is clearly an entrance. This is where she said it would be, and she did not lie. There's no way she could have moved a stone like that. She could not have weighed more than a pound or two more than I do. We we shared clothes. We were the perfect match, and there's no way I could move that. You would struggle to move that, and you have quadceps. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, a huge stone like this, who could expect to move it with any amount of strength? (laughs) Including Tai Shen's Including Tai Shen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I walk up to the stone. I'm kidding, this isn't kidding. <laughs> tai Shen, I'm proud of you. Large. You haven't thrown scalding hot tea in someone's face for 24 hours. <laughs> I'm that's waiting that's for the witch to show that's up. That's <laughs> <laughs> I was saving it for the witches. <laughs> all right, all right. Who right. witches? Simmer down. Mm-hmm. All right, well, can we all work together and maybe move this stone? Come on. Well, before we do, Sarnax, this is your realm of expertise. Yes. What do you know about this? What do I know about this? (laughs) Nothing. I mean, you're you're familiar with barrows, but you know nothing about this particular one. Oh, damn, we're batting zero. (laughs) You've never been here. I'm trying. The stone was moved by Rowan. (laughs) It's a Ramona. (laughs) Rowan, (laughs) the self. Is it possible that it wants us to come? Should we just approach it? Yes. It's wise. Just give it a little pushy push. We'll start small and work our way up. I'll walk up to the door. The stone. The you giant walk stone. you walk up to the stone, it towers over you. It's incredibly large. Uh, you look up at it and a stone like this clearly weighs hundreds, if not th- hundreds of pounds, if not a ton. Oh, I take back the elbow grease comment. Dumb. Mm-mm. Can only lift a ton minus ten pounds. So <laughs> this is beyond me. <clears throat> um, I believe in you, Tashan. You can do this. Do I get any kind of sense if I were to attempt, like, try and attempt to move it? And Are you going to? Yeah, I'll attempt to move it. Yeah. You put your it. hands on the stone, and it feels like stone. But as you attempt to roll it away, it moves with ease. Oh. And with a loud rumbling Whoa. sound, the oh, stone amazing. rolls from the door, and it, it stops, almost as if held in a certain position, with the entranceway open. Darkness spills out at you. You can see nothing inside of this. It feels almost magical in nature. But you do see little pebbles that line the walkway leading in. Well done. Stradanya comes and stands up behind you. It is unusually dark in there. Do you have a light or 
Or anything? I have this torch. No, I have no way to light it, unfortunately. I'm not a sorcerer <laughs> this time. <laughs> Anybody? Are you not a golden <laughs> dragonborn? <laughs> 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 Do this flame from your gland. Once a day, Sarnax. Ah, you should I just see. use it to light yeah, this torch. I mean, come on, man. I think that would be pretty cool. cool. Let's I, go. I feel <laughs> like the DM would be like, give it, give it to you. <gasps> no! <laughs> I'm right here! You're resistant, Caprice, come on, man! Like, you didn't even feel that! He, he, he does this, he does this oh, trick oh, every time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I intend to hold back, and instead it's the full blast. Yeah. You take the opportunity I, I will say, yeah, for something it. like this, you're easily able to use your dragon's breath. And you light the torch, you shine it in, and it seems to have no effect on the darkness. Flame can't pierce this darkness. It seems magical in nature. Oh. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're fucked. We're, we're just gonna fumble around? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, what else are we gonna do? Yeah, we have no solution to this problem. <laughs> no, we just walk forward into the darkness. Come on, man. I mean, uh, slowly. You, do you, you, you can hold my tail. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. A lot of tails here, a lot of tails. Not yeah. treating me like that again. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, I'll, I'll get the purpose will guide Oh, no. <laughs> Make a tail trail. <laughs> a tail trail. A tail trail, quite right. <laughs> purpose will guide our way, Caprice. Oh, we shall I am not, forward. I'm not afraid of the darkness. Nor right. I. We shall step forward. Marching order? Oh, yeah. Okay. Lizard bros, lizard bros. bros. I'm last. Lizard bros, lizard bros, lizard bros. Uh, I'm, I'm so you can hold their tail and then we'll hold your tails. Yeah, we're in like a box. <laughs> so format. it's um, okay, marching box order is going twos. to be Sarnax, Sarnax. and Tai Shen, followed by links. Shepherd and Caprice, <laughs> yeah. followed by Clayton and Victoria, <laughs> followed by Stradonia. Yeah. Um, you mm, are moving in. You, you, she does. Uh, she is very close to you. She seems very nervous and scared. Um, as you all begin to move in, Clayton Victoria, I need you to make a perception check for me, please. A disadvantage. Oh, gosh. 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 That's true. Uh, 14. Oh, shit. A natural 20 and a 12. Ooh. Oh. Come on. So, <laughs> perception, you say. Mm -hmm. 16. Not bad. What did you get, Victoria? You could dread me 14. if you wanted. Okay, I don't need to. Okay. Um, oh, you oh, step cool. in, Savage. and yes, yeah, as um, Victoria, the you you have felt Stradonia behind you all along, and as you step into the darkness, you feel coldness at your back. As all of a sudden, you hear the sound of rumbling stone as the stone door closes behind you. Mm. You think? <laughs> It could be I don't like that. All right, well, it looks like we're not leaving until we solve this problem. So you everybody hear, get your heads right. You we hear just... a voice from the other side of the door. Feast, my love, and return to me. Ah, Let harvest ah. ferry your soul back into my loving embrace. Feed upon the flesh of your kin and devour the bonds of love they hold for each other. Return to me this day, this true day of the harvest. With the moon bloated and fat in the sky, let the sacrifice return to return you to my waiting embrace. Son of a bitch! Damn, Damn it! I was uh, duped. Well done, Dungeon Mistress. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see that coming? No, I somehow just never could see that. that <laughs> all the portraits in the hallway? <laughs> she seems so pleasant. Yeah. This is classic Wicker Man shit, Professor. <laughs> exactly. Wow. As, oh, shit. as she finishes the words, and I guess I forgot to explain this, but this is Druskenwald. So oh, even though oh, this is oh, the day, oh. the moon is high in the sky, and you oh. did notice that it was. It looked bigger and almost bloated in comparison to the way it had looked yesterday when you arrived. Um, it was high in the sky, a true full moon in Druskenwald. Um, and as, um, as the last lights of moonlight are snuffed out as this stone door closes, far off in the distance, you hear the sounds of screaming. Man, I didn't even notice the moon once. <laughs> Damn it! 
You've we got to lay off the sauce. No, no, this is what happens when we don't pass any crossroads, all right? Damn. Another ritual. Well, we'll have to deal with this like we've dealt with the others. And I will go full uh, wood woes. <laughs> Barky boy. Barky boy. <laughs> as I face whatever is going to attack us. She right. wanted to bring her love back to life. She picked the wrong ones to sacrifice. Oh. Oh. You all imagine that you have a mere moment before <laughs> you are going to face whatever is inside of this I, 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 I don't, I don't, I'm too young to die. I don't want to die. I, there's, there's so much left in life that I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> With that, I need you all to roll for this. Right. I'm gonna roll for initiative and then I'm gonna roll my sinner's gamble. Ooh. Oh, baby! Oh, there we go. Shit. What is initiative again? Dex? Uh. <clears throat> actually, I'll tell you one second. I think yes, 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 you add your dexterity yeah, yeah. Um, modifier to it. Or it's just your dex modifier, sorry. 15 to 20. Uh, I got a 21. Oh, got 21, you go first. Thank you. 19. Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, we Darius, which is Shepard, this, as I'm watching you do this, I'm like, by shit. Jericho. Yeah. What did you get? 19. So the two of you got 19? Yeah. You just need to figure oh, out which shit. one of you is going to go? Um, that's a really um, cool And I am just going to put her in between the two of you because she also got a 19. Yeah, that's so fine. your Grim Malethica, who wants to go first? 19, Roland. Oh, who? No, 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 it's uh, the evil, the evil person. Oh, you got a 19. No, 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 I got a 10. No, no. I could have sworn someone told me they got a 19. I got a 19. That's what I said. So you two got a 19. You want to go first? You want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first, yeah. Okay, Swap perfect. Lethica and Farron. Yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't done them yet. Okay. The so I've done Marius, done. Jericho, Yorgrim, and then it's going to be this no, person. No, no, Fa and then, then Farron is nine, also 19, right? Yes, that's what I'm oh. saying. All three of them got 19. Got I need okay. to know which one of those two is going to go first, because she's going to go between. I see. Thank you. Uh, 15, to, uh, 15 to 20, anybody else? 14. Oh, sorry. Uh, then 10 to 15. Oh, 14. 10. There we go. Thank you. I, on my Got uh, it. Sinner's Gamble, I rolled two pair. So I'm going to use an instance of Sinner's Gamble to try to go for the full house. Oh, Hell yeah. Come on. I'm going to try one more time. Yeah, Ooh. do it. Come on, do it, do it, do it. Let her rip. I see. Yeah! I got two sixes and three ones. Woo! The next three turns, I will have advantage on all of my attacks. Oh, oh nice. nice. Grants me my sneak attack. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Let's fuck you, go. Yeah. Oh. What's the, what's like the best, like a royal flush? Five of a kind. Yeah, five royal of a kind, and you just win the, you win D&D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one? That, that's the one. You, you win. Just go. It's the game. You yeah, shoot with with literally says you win the game question mark. I don't, I don't fucking Boom. know. Boom, gun. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. And it blasts the DM. With right. that, you all, you are all in this narrow passageway, um, and it is pure darkness around you. Uh, but hearing these words that Stradania has called out through through the door, you rush deeper into the barrow until you find yourselves um, in a dark room. You see nothing except in the center, pale glowing silver light emanating from a floating rabbit mask. And as it pulses and pulses and pulses, you you watch as the silver light turns into bluish green spectral light until forming in front of you, you see the image of something similar to what you saw yesterday, uh, Victoria. But this form is significantly more horrifying. As you watch the form of your Aunt Rowan uh, dressed in a tattered, moth-eaten wedding dress, her skin and her bones exposed through rotting skin, her face sagging in some areas as her jaw hangs loose, a dark black maw where her mouth should be. As she looks out at all of you and because of the nature of this and that you did not perceive it, she will go first. As she opens her mouth even wider, and uh, she opens her mouth even wider, and she's going to cast Soul Harvest. I need every single one of you to roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. And also, this is her, so if you want to put her. This is the end. Oh, I rolled I roll pretty well. I got a Soul Harvest tickles. 19, nice. Can I twist this? I'm twisting. You what variety of uh, things? Uh, wisdom? Huh? Wisdom. Wisdom, yeah. Mm, Nineteen. I'm twisting it. Yeah. Yeah, everyone gets a plus. Dread. One if you're with Oh, on who? You. Me? Yep. Twenty. Thank you. Dread. I. Uh, oh. Then I got a. Um, 
23 with the plus 4. How do I know what kind of wisdom saving okay. throw 16. 25. Mm-hmm. I have charisma. Oh, it's just out. Uh, 15. Oh, yeah. no. I got Should I twist it? instead. Okay. Yeah. We have I one twist know. left. Or unless no, you've got more. No, we had a fuck ton of twists. Yeah, I okay. think the, the mod said we had like 20 something. Okay, then we yeah. should have. Yeah, you're yet twisted. But I'm, um, I'm keeping should, mine. I should twist it? Yeah, twist okay. it. Oh, battle cam, by the way. We need. Do we think 16 cool? That was cool? even worse. 16? I don't think that's uh, a problem. Oh. I should, should I, um, I twist it? Twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. You got an 11? Yeah. After the if I dreaded you, you can't twist it. Yeah, no, that's, I haven't That's been how dreads yet. work. I'm sticking with the 11. Just like I can't dread your twist. It's just not fair. I haven't that's been right. dreaded yet. Um, I could twist if I wanted to. You could, yeah. You could. I'm saying. They call me the they twister could. man. What did you get? 10. I'm a twister no. man. No, I'm plus four. We're all plus four. Yes. Oh, no. So I have a sixteen then. That's that's Everyone's not bad. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. Bro. 16. No, you put because you get plus four additionally because you're within range. He's got an aura of protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I've got an aura of being a badass. That's right. Badass. So re-roll full awesome. size. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Maybe one more twist. I. I'm good. I guess someone plus two. Yeah. I didn't know, yeah. Okay, like so Victoria got a 12, right. you got yeah. an 11, ten. a 10, you got an 11. Thank you, um, Thank you. You watch as these spectral, um, as these spectral tethers shoot out of her body, um, as if coming directly from her heart and latch on to the three of you. You immediately feel um, the breath ripped from your body uh, as you are going to take... Ow, that's my soul. What was the DC? Uh, not my soul! Uh, you guys were okay, I guess. Oh, 16 was good? We don't know what it You was. are we're each going three. to take nine, yeah, just those three. Okay. You are going to take nine points of um, necrotic damage. Nine Damn. points for me also? And I, 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 I assume we lost the rest did when, yes. we, when we slept overnight. Yes, yes okay, we did. Okay. Um, and the people that saved uh, will take half that. So you'll so take five. Th- what was the five, DC? Four. Uh, the DC was 15. Oh, so we So that's think. why it's only those three. So only half, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm doing that thing where there's like an animated version of Caprice coming out of my body and I'm like pulling it back into my <laughs> into myself. That's funny. It's like cup heavy. Yeah. Okay. If you take damage, you can use your you can use your reaction. Okay. Um seeing these tendrils shoot out, I am going to um quickly lift a finger up to my mouth and bite down, uh creating like a, a small bead of blood. Um and it is going to Expand and kind of encase me into like a, a blood red transparent bubble. Oh. Um, and I'm going to use my bloody bulwark. Oh, Ooh, nice. Um, so I draw upon my life force to create a bloody barrier around me for temporary protection. I will spend hit dice equal to the spell level targeting me and gain uh, temporary. It is not a spell. It's not a spell. It is not a spell. Oh, no. oh did you change that too, Derek? No. It should just be straight up like. Damage? Yeah, if you take damage. Yeah, if you, you take if you take damage to, from a spell, it's like shield. There okay. shouldn't be anything about spell levels in there. Okay. Is this all a magical ability? Uh, mm-hmm. Nice. So it says you just roll some hit dice, you gain temporary hit points. She has, I'll just ruin it. She has three abilities and she has one um, yeah, you don't one attack. Yeah, I don't know anything. if it's a magical ability. Just roll hit dice. Yep. I'm rereading it one moment. Okay, I will spend hit dice. Equal to the damage? No, no, no. Just, it should be. Sorry. That's all good. Uh, Learning. It spend hit dice it. equal to the spell level target. That, I didn't change that. That was there. Yeah, before. I didn't. It, it sh- that's. Sh- I would say just roll two d6. Yeah. yeah. It should be roll two d6. Just, you should be able to roll hit dice equal to half of your proficiency bonus rounded up, like which is two. Up, which is two. Okay. And then you get that much temporary hit points okay. to help mitigate some of the damage that you took. Okay. So I'm rolling two d6. And so that is six temporary hit points. Um, so you have. Yeah. So you'd only only and ultimately end up taking three damage. Boom. Okay. So I'm. Oh. 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 oh, 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 oh. So that deducts two hit dice for me. Yes, you yes. are using. You're cashing in your hit dice to create a living shield. Got it. That's okay. awesome. I love that. Uh, so that is, yeah, that is what she does. Uh, it is, mm, it is Shepard's turn. I need you, Roger, to take damage. I'm taking it. You are going to take 
uh, the tether pulses, uh, doing uh, four points of damage to you. Jeez. And you you watch as she sucks the life from your body, <laughs> and you imagine that if she were wounded, she would heal from this. Oh, damn. All right. Um, uh, at the start of the combat, I will have uh, scattered uh, some what look like bone dice as they clatter to the ground, mm. and you see the full house match uh, as the dice land, and then they... Pfft, they puff into a mist as they uh, uh, fade away as I gain the bonus from my uh, Sinner's Gamble. I'll make an attack with advantage on this uh, specter. That's pretty good. Uh, 14 plus 8 is 22. That hits. Uh, so I will get my sneak ad- attack, which is an additional 3d6, uh, which is going to be 16 total points of damage. Nice. Um, and this is magical because it's coming from your... Yeah, we'll say it's magical. Okay. And I'll just kind of... Uh, we'll say it's magical. Strafe to the side <laughs> as I'm firing at this uh, this creature. And uh, you, you do. You strafe to the side as you fire at her. Uh, your blasts hit and you watch as bits of flesh and bone erupt off of her body as she jolts uh back. Um, her, she doesn't seem to have much control of her, her movement as of yet. She's recently being reborn. Uh, and uh, she, it, she takes a significant amount of damage as she opens her mouth to, to shriek. You watch as a black ichor begins to spill out of her mouth and down her chin, uh, dripping on her wedding dress. <laughs> Lady Luck is smiling. Sarnax. Uh, I'm just gonna run up with my club. <laughs> and sadly can keep Oh, uh, can I have you roll another wisdom saving throw for me, please? Me? No, no, no. Oh, oh yeah. Five. Plus four. Okay. No, just kidding. Nine. Wait, wait, wait. Wisdom? No, it is five. Plus four is nine. Nice. Okay, the tether is still connected to you. Ow, still my soul. <laughs> My most of me! <laughs> and I am just going to uh, swing in with my club. We'll approach you the same way we approach all restless spirits by beating it to death again. <laughs> Natural 20! <laughs> oh! Natural 20! <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a lot of money. It's just TikTok. What's wrong with TikTok? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh. 16 plus uh, 5 is 21 points of damage. Damn. Um, and oh, uh, if the end, the sap will seep into its ectoplasm, and once again, it will be disadvantage on attacking anyone but me, okay. as I'm staring up at it defiantly with my uh, bark all over me. All right. Um, you club into this thing, and though uh, moments prior she was incorporeal, she has regained form with whatever uh, ritual Stradonia has set up here for this harvest festival, Um, and you are able to slam your club into her. You hear the snapping of bones as you break one of her arms. It it hangs limply at her side. Um, She turns her head towards you. You can hear the cracking of the uh, the bones in her vertebrae uh, as she looks down down at you, uh, black ichor begins to drip and pour from her milky white eyes um, as she watches you. Uh, and I'll call out, uh, enjoy the sustenance of the old ones, and I'll just cast healing word on somebody. Who's the, nice. who's the, who's the, who's the I'm getting pretty fucked. Okay, out. I'll do it on someone. Oh. Yeah. That'll be uh, uh, six points. Oh, a little bit of my soul back. That's a bonus oh. Actually, I'll, I should, I'll do it at the third level. I'll do it. Uh, six, six is pretty good. Uh, give, me, give me some. Give me some. Uh, with the with this tendril connected to me uh, and beautiful. seeing this seeing this creature in front Plus of me, five. I Over once again one. place my hand on my book at my side and I stretch it out in front of me. And as it opens and it flips through the pages, uh, choking through exasperated breaths, you'll hear me chant in an oath I've said before. Uh, and it's in brightest day, in blackest night. No evil shall escape my right. Let those who play evil's game beware my axe and Fu Zhao's flame. Uh, And I cast uh, Heretic's Bane with my sacred oath. 
Uh, for one minute, you gain a fuck ton of stuff. <laughs> Super Saiyan. Uh, you have advantage on attack rolls against creatures that have cast a spell or use a magical ability since Battle the start of its yeah. last turn. Additionally, nice. your weapon attacks deal 1d8 radiant damage. When you hit a creature that has spell casting ability, uh, uh, abilities with a melee weapon attack, you attempt to disrupt their magic. Uh, mm. If the creature attempts to cast a spell before the start of the next turn, it must succeed a wisdom saving throw or choose a different action. Uh, if the creature is concentrating on a spell, it must make its next concentration check at disadvantage. Okay. Uh, and then something else. We'll get there. Okay. Um, and I will. I'm not going to say this is a place for witches. It's action time. Uh, it's action time. Uh, that's what's that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah all right. Yeah, just, well, yeah. let's use this one. Let's use the super dragon. Yeah, he's the dragon. Yeah, yeah super dragon. dragon. I mean, obviously, it's going to be very good. I just can't read it. No. Uh, 17? That hits? Oh, oh my God. All right, all right. Now we're cooking. <laughs> okay. So that's 12 points of damage, and I'll attack a second time. Is it what what type of damage? Uh, the axe would be slashing, but. Oh, it, and it deals an additional. So. Uh, that would be 12 Is it magical slashing or just regular slashing? I think it's regular slashing. Okay, you, you, you notice that the, uh... It should be... Are your slashes doing radiant you should, damage? You should have magical. It should be magical. It might not fail. Uh, uh it, it, well, it's, it says slashing damage if I attack with my gray sword. If yeah. it's but, just but, if it's just a great sword, it would just be well, great axe. Great axe. Yeah, yeah, great axe. It would axe. just be. Um, but heretic's bane deals an additional one d eight of radiant damage. Just split them. And on that, I rolled an eight. Okay. Uh, the slashing damage doesn't seem to do as much as you had expected. So it was it was what twelve. 12 so it does eight. six. And once more, uh, twelve. 12 misses. Good try. So, uh, you, did you do radiant damage? Yeah, eight points of radiant damage. Uh, you notice the radiant damage <gasps> seems to do a significant amount of damage. Oh, oh. Get fucked! It all bounces in. Yeah. <laughs> it was eight points of radiant damage. Just turned into 16. Uh, as, <clears throat> as the radiant damage uh, bursts out from you, um, she recoils back from the light as uh, her flesh begins to singe. Uh, the wedding dress begins to burn. Um, you notice that her, her dead flesh is popping and cracking. Um, she uh, is thoroughly not enjoying uh, what you were bringing to the table. Um, she looks down at the both of you. She is floating well above you, looking down at you. Um, she looks down at you, at all of you, as her jaw drops oh. and she begins to wail. Yeah. Oh, no. I need all of you to roll a constitution saving throw. She is a banshee. I am so toast. Oh, natural 20. What's the, what's the range Holy on shit. your aura, though, Mace? It's only like 10 hey. feet, right? It's 10 feet, so it'd yeah, just be so me, and, me and <laughs> It'd be lizard oh, bros. That would be a 29. Uh, <laughs> come on, come on. Damn. Um, I got a 10. With them, that's just gonna be a uh, 14. 19. I'm about to age 99 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do one twist. Ow. If you're gonna twist, I'm gonna dread Mike. You can dread me to stop you from twisting. No, that's okay. This is more fun. Con? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, con? Uh, yes. I rolled a nine, which normally oh, would be <laughs> 12 or uh, 13. But it's my madness number for today, so it is a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> so I probably would have failed either way, but yeah, it's uh, a five instead. Okay. What did you get? What's your new mic? Oh, uh, 17. Okay. 14, um, 14 17, 1, 9, Nine. 16. 19. Clayton and Shepard. Uh, you, you, the, the piercing scream, uh, Victoria, you have heard this noise before. This was the sound that, um, that caught you off guard the previous night. The pounding in your head, you are familiar with this noise and you are able to steel yourself against it. Um, so are most of you. 
But Clayton and Shepard, this noise is unlike anything that you have ever heard before. The pain, the wailing agony of love lost uh, pierces into you, into your very soul, and you feel yourself dizzying as unconsciousness finds you. You both drop two zero hit points. Oh, no! Leave me alone! <laughs> Akira! Akira! <laughs> Yeah, that's rough. Oh, man. Hey. And that is her turn. Holy shit. That's it. Damn. That's me. That's you. That's me. Yeah. That's a cold yeah. ass spell. It's not a spell. Or a feature. Yeah. It's a creature okay. feature. If only it was dex, not a single dex save. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Ghosts. That's really funny. Of course, there's an index. The exploding fish lobster was a dex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I was hiding behind the trees. I was behind the trees. <laughs> 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 Did you summon with dex saves? I'm just, uh, I'm just very good at something. Yeah, so you just take no damage. Yeah. I couldn't even, uh, yeah. I couldn't uncanny even uncanny dawn. dawn. <laughs> yes. She's so good at them, it's uncanny. <laughs> to take half of my life force instead of all of it. I am going to, um, using that nick on my finger that I, I had before, I'm going to raise it up and shoot out a uh, blood bolt towards her. Um, but I will... You will see it uh, come, kind of expand and enlarge on its way out to her, and I will use uh, three sorcery points to heighten that spell. Let's go! Oh, nice! Oh, does that make a sense? A little bit of meta magic. A blood bolt will attack the right. You do make a, if you're using or, blood bolt, the, the opponent will have to make a saving throw, so okay. that's what you're asking. Okay. I forget what heightened spell is. Um, heightened spell, so you can spend three sorcery points to give one target of the spell disadvantage on its first saving throw made against Nice! Hell yeah. Okay. So that is... Nine plus six, so 15. Uh, 16 hits, her AC is 16. Mm. 15 misses, her AC is 16. Twist it. No. It wasn't. It wasn't. Okay. It misses. Uh, you let loose this blood magic, but as she turns to you, you see that even through all of this ichor and rot, that this was your aunt. And your face, Stradania, was not wrong. You have an uncanny resemblance as you fire this bolt at her. It's almost as if you're attacking yourself and you were thrown off guard. You miss uh, with this attack, and it is now Clayton's turn. Oh, actually, um, I also need you to take one point of a necrotic damage, um, and she is going to heal for two points. I am resistant to points. Oh, so you're only going to take one point. Wait. Oh, yeah. Two points. Yeah. Well, no. You still take half. You'd still you still take half. Half of one point. Which would be one point. Okay. So she still heals for two. Is that minimum of one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's kind of what yeah. uh, the song is. It's always minimum of one. Um, and it is, oh, Tai Shen, you had your turn too, didn't you? Uh, you also need to take five points of damage. Am I taking damage from? You're taking damage from the soul harvest. At the start of your turn, you take damage from the soul harvest. And you, Victoria, and Shepard all have the soul harvest attached to you. Yeah, um, so concentrating on that. No. Damn it. Um, and she's going to heal for for 10 points. Damn you, heretics, babe! <laughs> uh, but both of you can Seriously, roll uh, another wisdom yeah, save but, uh, to see if you break that connection. Uh, now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you killed me. Uh, oh, mace. Uh, roll another wisdom save to see if you break the connection. Oh, Taishi. I have to roll a save? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you want to break the connection, yeah. 19? Yeah, hell yeah. That passes. Uh, as, your, as your turn ends, uh, you, you miss uh, with, your, with your attack, but you wrench yourself backwards, and you grab on to this uh, soul tether, and you rip it out of your chest. And it, it's painful, but you're able to sever that tie. 
All right, I'm gonna twist. I'm gonna twist. Chris. You can't twist these oh, ones. Oh, never mind. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I got I nothing. I have no hope. <laughs> I have no hope. Uh, ten. You, is your wisdom really bad? Finally, you twist. I'll be. I'll be yeah, kind. You can twist. Go ahead. Twist it. Twist you got it, the mace. twist. Just twist fucking it. do it. Just I'm twist it. it. Jeez, all right. Just twist it. That should. I don't need to have so many things. Remember your own bonus twistable. you also get. So yeah. Yeah. I was adding that. I rolled it too. Yeah. Good. <laughs> there I am. Okay. That's, That's 17. Good. That passes. You are also able to, uh, watching this, uh, as uh, these two women are staring at each other, you are able to sever that connection. There is only one soul, uh, soul tether, and that one is linked to Shepard. Uh, Clayton, it's your turn. So, presumably... Am I in the dying state or am I stable? You are at zero, at zero points. Uh, you are in. It, for Banshees, it just says that you are at zero hit points. I think you until I'm stable, stable, I have to make death saves. Yeah, like yeah, I think yeah. I think that's yes. fair. Um, <laughs> Good luck, my friend. Are we doing the icebound rules? Yes, oh, yeah. everybody oh. close your eyes. Oh, wow, my first time. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers, chat. That's right. Thank you. Oh, we're good. Yep, uh, we're good. You don't know which D20 I used. Okay. Uh, um, Caprice. Hi. <clears throat> I look at uh, everything that's going on around me. Does it look like this entity, this creature, this uh, ghost, for lack of a better word, is focused mostly on Victoria? and that the, No. It's not targeted. And then I look <clears throat> between my two companions, the person who I have come to know as my tiefling bro, <laughs> who I've drunk with so many evenings, and the person who owes me a lot of money. And I cast healing word on Mr. Azran. <laughs> son of a bitch! <laughs> You've got good sense, boy! <laughs> Dollars and cents. Can't collect debt from a dead man. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. No one will ever be able to find the gold in this case. Yeah. So we can hold it. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Jesus. Oh, I need to remind myself how healing word fucking works. It's uh, it's it's uh, one d four. One d four. One d four. Depends on what spell I'm uh, just using it at. Uh, if you depends on what. It's basically one d four. Might as well make a third level, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. All right, two, six, uh, eight plus my five. Yeah, yeah, plus five. You get thirteen, 13. points. Okay. Right. Right. Um, and I'll uh, I'll run over behind Shepard and just uh, use me as a meat shield. <laughs> use me as a meat shield. <laughs> We're gonna be okay. <laughs> I, I got you, buddy. I got you. I got you. Next, I got you. Next. We're gonna get out of here. <laughs> it <laughs> is it is the start of your turn. You are going to oh, immediately no. take yeah, so three points of damage, which would be auto, auto two fail, auto, auto fails. No one fail. Oh just one. Just one. Yeah, I guess. Okay. It'd just be one, right? But then I still have right. two of you crit. It's, oh, you're so right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. That's a two. Okay, yeah. so the, but I, then, I, then I have to roll death saving. But then you have to roll death saving throw. Okay. So everybody so close your eyes. eyes. As long as I don't get a natty one. So fun. Okay, everybody open your eyes. Nobody Great. pull a yorn here, okay? Yeah, I was just gonna Nobody say, Nobody right pull a yorn here. I'm up! Um, <laughs> Sarnax. The natural 20 got very excited and shouted it out while we all had it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. To me, though, it was such it a was cool awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, it was worth it. Yeah, it was worth it. Yeah, 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 it's exactly uh, true. Yeah. Sarnax. Don't fuck it up. Uh, I am going to say, uh, uh, Caprice, I've got him, don't worry. As, uh, <laughs> Suddenly, uh, Shepard's mouth will fill with horrible, like, uh, tar like sap. Uh, <laughs> as uh, the old ones awaken you as I cast Healing Word on you. Yes. Healing Word Bros. And I'll, I'll, I'll roll for that. And then I'm just gonna swing in. Uh, and I'll say, Face me! Strike me! Uh, don't use your spooky ghost tricks. Uh, I wanna make an attack roll. I'm gonna use a twist, if I can. I think so. And she also heals for. Uh, that is gonna hit. Stuff as she sucks your soul. Mm. Uh, that is gonna be a seven. Seven misses. Uh, hit. 
No, so, oh, I, I hit, I, oh. it was like a 20. Yeah, that hits. 25. So seven for damage. And so I'm gonna uh, do a third level healing word on uh, Shep. But you said you did seven damage? Seven points of damage. Okay, got it. You completely undo and some the healing that she just did. Uh, Taishan. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Seeing her just wail out and drop two of my friends, I rip my axe and I go in for two more attacks. Uh, and this time when I activated the um, Heretic's Bane, the blade of my axe edge uh, ignited almost in like a, like a, like a, not a molten flame, but began to glow as if the axe blade was heated. Uh, this time it'll erupt in fire. Like the doorknob in Home Alone. <laughs> yeah. Divine smite. Ro- twist it. Hang on, I'll twist it. I'll I'll twist use it. Twist. Hang on, we are the seven. Twenty-one. Yeah, Twenty-one hits. Yeah, Twenty-one to hit. Mm-hmm. Natural twenty. Oh, actually, 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 I'm at natural twenty. Hang on. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, every time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, and I'll attack twice. Okay. So. <laughs> Sorry. Pause. Um. The Crooked Moon dice it's are perfectly legible. Yeah. 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 We'll be we so have 15 have misses. Oh my god, we've been here before. Um, so Not over design. I'll strike in and I'll land. Oh, huh? Oh, oh don't you fight for me. Alright. Nine with. So the uh, blade so. will. The axe edge will, as it's, sudden, as it's uh, slamming in and uh, cutting into her, it will deal four points of slashing damage. The heated metal will cut in with radiant light dealing six, uh, and I'll ignite it with Fu Zhao's flame uh, with a divine smite at level two. Oh. Uh, mm. For three D8. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are they giving it all the spells at level one? Oh, in huh. D&D? No. no. Right, keep going. Total We're not talking about that right now. This is. Well, mm. 14. Mm. No, what? 14? Mm. I thought that was a 7. That's not a 7? No, that's a Oh, one. You're, you're sure right. So that's 8 additional points of radiant damage. That's pretty good, bro. <laughs> that's pretty good. Couple of. So it'd be 16 points of radiant damage in total. I've been, yeah, I'm doing it which all. Which means 32. Yeah, it's been, a lot. It's, quadruple. it's been a lot. It could be quadruple. Uh, quad yeah. steps, come on. Yeah, quad steps. Meets Las Cognes. <clears throat> says, we're almost at 2.115 million Whoa! on Kickstarter. Yes. Great. So we are so close. The CrookedMoon.com. <laughs> okay. Um, is that your turn? Yes. You uh, rush up to her doing a significant amount of damage. Um, She is, um, you are slicing into her, searing her flesh. You can smell burnt human flesh filling up this barrow. Um, And it is now her turn. Um, She is going to, uh, which one of you in front of her looks the weakest? Out of the three of them? Yeah, that are within five feet of her. I've taken four damage. I've taken nine damage. How much damage have you taken, Vicky? Uh, five feet. I'm two. I, I look pretty damn good. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. It's 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 okay. She's right. gonna reach towards you with um, with her spectral hand, and she's gonna pierce her nails into your flesh uh, and begin to suck the lifeblood from you. Is that an attack roll? Uh, it is. She's disadvantaged against Kai Oh. Ooh. She misses. You could dread. You could. We have 80,000 of them. I'm going to dread. Yeah. Wasn't meant to be. <laughs> so she she will miss. You're welcome to the sticky sap. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's her turn. She's already oh. used her big moves. So, sorry to reiterate that. How are you all looking? I'm looking pretty good. <laughs> I'm looking pretty okay. Taking nine points. Oh. And I actually. They're both looking pretty good. Is, okay. I had to see if she got her whale fairly, back. Fairly, fairly well. Mm. Vicky. All Vicky, right. Vicky. Kill her! Kill her! Shoot 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 her! Sho
rush forward, rush up to her, um, and I will take my my spiked prayer beads around my neck and rip them and pull one across my palm, opening up a gash, um, and I will hold that up and it will expand into a wave of blood um, and expand out for me. Um, So I will need you to make a dexterity throw. But also both of you to make a dex save. Oh. Saving throw, excuse me. She got a three. Okay, so that's a fail. That's right, a good d20. I'm gonna hiccup it. Gonna dread. Oh, there it is. And I rolled a four. And it was not meant to be. Oh, mm-hmm. Is, is oh. that not it right there? Oh, it's, it is. It's a dex save? Yeah, yeah. and don't forget plus four oh. from Taisha. Mm-hmm. Might be good enough. Oh, plus four from Taisha. Dex, yeah, dex. Uh, that'll be a 17. 26. Oh, you guys are going to love this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So, fail and two passes. It's like my it's favorite like room, The Shining. It's a nine. What? That's a nine? That's a nine. That's a nine. Plus 21. Okay. She will take 21 points of necrotic damage, and... 21 points of necrotic damage? Yes. Okay, uh, it does seem like it doesn't do as much as you'd expect it. Resistant. Okay, and um, I and both of you will take that nine. Yeah, so the way it works is, is if I you I can read pass, this, I can do one. Yeah, yeah okay. definitely. Okay, um, so this is using my Crimson Nova ability. Mm-hmm. Um, so a wave of blood crashes into your enemies in a 15-foot radius centered on you. Oh, shoot. Each creature within 15 feet must make a dexterity saving throw. A creature takes 3d10 plus your charisma modifier, necrotic damage, or half as much on a successful roll. Okay. You and a number of creatures affected by but, the spell, up to your charisma modifier that you choose to res- that you choose, restore hit points for half the damage you rolled. So you take nothing. Oh wow! If you had missed the mm. dex saving throw, you would have ended up taking the full damage, but then she would have healed you for half. I as see. part of the hemomancer. Oh. Oh, you also take 10 points of damage for hitting with a spell. That's pretty funny. That's, that's not really optional. Funny, yeah. You can't undo that. It's no, heretic no, bait. Let's no, fucking go. Yeah, I optional. fucking love that. But She's hey, a heretic after all. You should have been a witch. No, yeah, no one would bat an eye if you wanted to do it. Is that the stink of witchcraft? <laughs> take yeah. in. Yeah, please. Do you want me to take damage? Yeah, no, I do. I'm kidding, that's optional. What do you mean? Isn't that how it works? It says... I may. You may. Oh, you so may. Yeah. Thank God we put that may in there. Yeah, that may. Okay. It's so important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good about may. Yeah. I just wanted to read that it was there, you know, because I felt like uh, that was the only time it was going to Clayton. Uh, I'm awake. You are. Yeah, right. I have 13 hit points. You would, You do. You do. <clears throat> oh, my God, we're going to die here, aren't we? How's your money? Are you okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> I look over. I see the begging hobo. I see the I see the drunk gambler unconscious on the ground. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh god! Oh, so yeah. like holding his soul. <laughs> no, we are getting out of here. The greatness of Clayton Asrin must spread beyond this barrow. I'm gonna pull out my um pearl, and I'm gonna stare into it. And it turns from a pearl, it glows with this pearlescence, and the pearl, pearl, pearlescence almost like becomes one with me as I like shimmer with this very faint pearlescence. And you will see the pearl, a large orange eye, now sitting affixed. It doesn't just flash. I am become Azran, avatar of Halashna, the hunger below! And I'm going to uh, twist my hand, and this. Portal will rip open right on top of her, uh, <laughs> and there's going to be a. Great. Uh, you'll see these just countless orange eyes. You'll hear gibbering coming from the portal, um, and then just in a split second, you see a tentacle whip out of the portal, and <laughs> I need to randomly choose someone within 10 feet of the portal to see who gets sucked in. Oh! <laughs> I hope 
with me. I hope it's me. <laughs> so she's gonna be four. This is, this is about to change okay. dramatically. Oh, so my four, God. three, two, one. Remember okay. that. Four, okay. three, one, two, 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 one. Just remember yeah. you, you, couldn't, two, you couldn't have put it over here. That's not fun enough. Yeah, that's not yeah, what's fun the most compelling narrative? I want to have to roll. roll. Come on. But Clayton's not thinking about that. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no! So, how well, this works, this is uh, the Enchiridion of Insanity, uh, names TBD, uh, to be finalized. Um, da, 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 da. Just like a Kickstarter page, all names and designs uh, subject to change. Yeah, these are rough sketches, but they're fun sketches, yes. I'm having it's a blast. Fun. This is a manual in now. Oh yeah! Yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Wow! Yeah, wow. I watched Prime. I watched. So oh, yeah. tentacles will basically reach out and just you know almost like chaotically doesn't care who just gra- grab reaches, reaches for somebody, and it grabs Vicky or t- attempts to grab Vicky. Yeah. Uh, yes. I'm going to spend all of my madness points on it. Great. Oh. So instead of a 16 spell save DC, uh, I increase the spell save DC for every three madness points that I spend on it. So I, it is now a 19 spell save DC. Oh! Uh, for well, for anyone, yeah, I, yeah. I, I do when I summon when, it. When you summon it, you can you can use your madness pool to boost the things that you summon. Because, That's fucking cool as shit. Um, on a failure, the creature is grappled, but the thing is, I, you know, eventually it might suck her in, and we're good. <laughs> um, yeah, totally. So oh, make a strength false. save. Strength save. What am I strength save. Strength save. DC 19. Are right, you're right next to me, then. You're right next to me. Yeah, yeah. You probably need the natural 20. Probably need natural 20. Oh, no, you get plus four. Yeah, plus four. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're right, right next to me. In addition to my plus. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you need, you need a 14. <laughs> Professor? You need a 14 or higher. Yeah, that ain't gonna do Should it. Should we twist it? Let's twist it. Yeah. yeah. We'll do one, one twist. twist. Do we yeah. want to see what happens. We do. One yeah, one twist. The chaotic I, I we're running run the rules that the hole's eight feet, uh, eight, eight inches wide. So if you, unless you want to fit through that, <laughs> you're, you're gonna get extruded <laughs> Also, the it. tentacles are of a color you've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even describe the color. Come on, Vicky. Oh! Okay. You're good. Okay. 19. 19. 23. So you slip out of the grass with this tentacle. Yeah. Not today. You go <laughs> with an immense <laughs> slap it away. Oh. Uh, and that's you. it. You. That's my turn. Uh, that's an action. Uh, do I, I don't know. Really honestly. Professor, control your feet. You might have spells in your spell list that are not. Oh there. yeah, I could do. I don't know if you listed all your spells in there. I could do. Because you we figured you'd want to pick your own spells. For this, right? No, I'll save it. I'll save it. Uh, Caprice. Uh, yeah, chef dude, buddy old pal, you all right? Uh, <laughs> sure, money. <laughs> okay, uh, we, we gotta get the fuck out of here. We gotta get the fuck out of here right now. <laughs> I'm gonna move over here. <laughs> oh, I'm up. I'm up. Uh, yeah, you stand up. I'm still, on, I'm still prone. And I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm just gonna. <laughs> and I'm gonna whistle, and all of a sudden you hear this. The sound of moving wheels as suddenly from behind the uh, insanity banshee a <laughs> giant spectral locomotive out of nowhere emerges. Start the choo-choo train! I will spend my action and my bonus action to cast Ride the Rails, which in a line that I choose of 10 feet is going to move through the area, including my square. That's important. I have to occupy the square that it moves through, and all of a sudden the train is going to move forward. It's going to do some shit to these folks, but if you guys want to hitch a ride and get away from this fucking portal, you can do that. Thank you. As the train goes by, Shep, he like reaches out for the train and it's five feet out of him. He's like choking on stabbing yeah. his own blood. He's like, Amazing. Uh, All right. Um, the train is 120 feet long, 10 feet high, 10 feet wide, and must pass through a square that I occupy. The ghost train passes through allies unharmed. Um, myself and target creatures that I choose, and I choose all of you, may hitch a ride moving along the line 30 feet. So if you want to move 30 feet in this direction, you may now do so. All other creatures, and I don't know if this is the portal because it's not technically a creature, but no. all other por- uh, creatures, and I think that this applies to uh, Banshee McGill 
Billy Cuddy over here, um, <laughs> move 10 feet in the same direction of my heading. So it should go 5, 10, and just land on the other side of the portal. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it that's also... That's pretty good, Derek. That's pretty good. I think it's okay. Uh, it must make a wisdom saving throw, DC 16. And I can move 30 feet. Yeah. yeah. You don't easily to pass them out, but you pass it 30 feet away. Okay. Um, then that's, that's all that happens. Uh, it go. does not take the psychic damage of fear as the experiences the nightmare spectral mm. locomotive, probably because sure. of its uh, shared spectrality. Yeah, probably. I, imagine. It's, I don't um, think it's as afraid of specters and, as... Uh, uh, if you both want to move, you can. You can also stay there. You, it, it's your option. You like to create, is, it, is it moving the ghost? I'm not only to the, you, only so that you can, can, hop, you can hop on the train, hobo style, yeah. and you can move up to 30 feet in the direction that I, that I indicated. So if you wanted to go It by, is moving her, though. Yeah. Right? So yes. it's going to move her to the other side of the portal. Yes. Right? So she's going to be there. She's going to be there. Because he was like up there. So yeah. 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 I'll catch and then if you guys yeah. want to move 10 feet or and stay with it, right? You yeah. can just stay right yeah. with the ghost. Yeah, if you, wanna, if you want, want to. As the train's yep. riding past, you just hitch on. grab onto the rail at Me the too. end and just move back 10 feet. And then still right in front of this. You got this, guys! Nightmare Silk technical. That'll be the conclusion of my yeah. turn. Oh, oh, perfect. Yeah. A comical sediment with an olive and a toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, it's cool. This spectral train travels through her, moving her out of the way. Some of you board the train. You've That's seen funny. this happen before, uh, and you react to it quickly as you um, readjust yourselves in this space. Uh, Shepard, it's your turn. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> train and I'm gonna stand up uh, this is actually the last turn that I get my uh, advantage hmm. on attack actually you're going to take oh, four points of necrotic damage she's going to heal for eight no, I'm still up I'm still up ah my fucking soul stop it as I raise the voodoo gun and I fire off uh, an attack advantage breach my fucking soul that's not bad uh, 21 to hit that hits so it's just four to sixes. Oh, wow. <laughs> 12, uh, 13, 4, I rolled two ones and two sixes. Okay, so, so that works out. Uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 points of voodoo damage. Uh, you, and then do I have to roll to see if she keeps You do if, roll to see if she keeps, she, she keeps it. Yep. <laughs> Jesus! Oh. Oh. I mean, I mean, I mean, after she, she hurt me. Oh. <laughs> Wisdom saving throw. Oh, Stop. no! Stop. I got an 11. She's gonna keep sucking. <laughs> Enough, enough. Uh, and then I'll it's be a double damage. I give up. Fuck. I'm trailing blood and what all sorts fuck? of shit's happening. Uh, uh, why, why are you chasing after me? <laughs> <laughs> why do you fucking pursue? Jerica, or uh, uh, Sarnax, it's your turn. Sinner's Gamble is done. Uh, Jerinax. Sarnax. Oh my god. Um, I'll look at. Uh, I'll look at Tai Shen and I will say, I do not understand your strange concept of a draconic fire god, <laughs> but call upon his flame now as a. Uh, That's really funny. Uh, <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, as the. Um, my shield will, con will weep at sap as it'll spread out into a pool here. Um, I think it's just 10 foot. Yeah, so yep. directly underneath her, and uh, it can be lit on fire. Ooh. Um, and it's difficult terrain, probably not for a ghost. No, she's floating above it. But so. I thought that was pretty cool. I do it think that's pretty, pretty cool. That's pretty badass thing to say to a motherfucker. Who are you, uh, on fire? She isn't covered in a little of the sap. And then I'm yeah, just gonna swing. She's covered in a little. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. That's, that's all I wanted to hear. Oh, that looks good. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. Good dread. enough. Uh, oh. Uh, it's still fine. You can dread me again. It'll be plus eight. So I'm eighteen. Dread. Okay. You got him. Natural no. 20. Damn. Dread. Okay. No. Oh, uh, man. That's 15. <laughs> that misses. Yeah, what? <laughs> Finally got one. <laughs> well dreaded. Thank you. Well thank you. Well thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is the sap not there? Uh, no, the sap the sap's there, oh, but to... um, he slips on the sap as he attempts to swing in on her, uh. and as she's floating above, uh, even though it, it is now dripping from the bottom of her wedding dress, um, he is uh, Sarnax is unable to find purchase on this creature. Taishan, it is your turn. If you light him on fire, say something really badass like "What a sap!" <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> 
Do not worry, Sarnax. You will gain knowledge in the purity of Fu Zhao's flame. Uh, as I uh, strike down with uh, my axe, uh, and uh, the first attack will be 22 to hit. That hits. And I will also cast Searing Smite so Ooh. that my smite is ignited in uh, a dragon's fire. Uh, so. Very cool. Eight. what are you doing with them? Oh, they're over here. <laughs> uh, and then this is 1d6. Alright, so it is six slashing damage, five radiant damage, and two fire damage. And I'll cause my axe to strike the sap as I clean through the speckle. Oh, that's pretty you nice. You watch as Taishen raises his axe and he begins to channel the power of Fu Zhao. Uh, and he illuminates with radiant light as the blade erupts in holy fire. And as he, sli- uh, as he slices down into her, um, the blade pierces through her, igniting the sap that is on the, the bottom of her dress before it collides with the, uh, the puddle of sap on the ground, erupting into a pillar of fire. As she lets out a banshee's wail, all of you nice. feel that pain in your heads as, as you feel like you're about to collapse yet again. <gasps> Oh, no. But in that single moment before she finishes the wail, the flames consume her. She lets out a different <laughs> scream, the scream of true death as you smite this banshee and you find yourselves in quiet as where this banshee has been, where Rowan von Zarovich had been, this resurrected love of Stradanya von Zarovich is now nothing more than a pillar of ash. A light bit of red, still uh, embers, still burning for just a second before they are completely snuffed out and darkness swallows you. The... This barrow is completely silent and all you smell is smoke and flame. You listen the sounds of screaming that you'd heard upon coming in here uh, in the village are completely gone. You hear nothing, silence all around. For the sake of brevity, you choose to make haste to the village to check on the people you had met the day before. It is not easy, or it is not difficult to move the stone as you roll it out of the way. It is significantly heavier than it had been when you entered, but with the full force of the six of you, you're able to move it out of the way as you rush as quickly as you can uh, through the through this glade, in through the cave, over the over the bridge uh, of the waterfall, around the. Um, along the road that circles around the village and into the village itself. And it is here, with the swollen moon shining down on this village, that you see the full force of destruction here. The buildings caught fire. Towering over the maypole in the very center of this town is something that you realize you had seen constructed the day before, but now put together in full. In the shadow of this wicker man, you see piles of human bones the true sacrifice for her lost love. Because in this moment, you finally hear noise again as your ears ring with this horror that you're witnessing. Every single person in this town slaughtered, sacrificed in the ritual of the harvest. You hear the music play and your heads turn towards the manor on the hill all the lights illuminated. You can see two silhouettes dancing in the window of the ballroom, embraced in each other's love, as the laughter of two women drifts down over this valley. The harvest ritual was successful. Love is eternal. And that is where we will end this session. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, wow. Nikki, that was awesome. Holy shit! Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got 
juked like super <laughs> excited. Oh. Mega juked. Oh. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Fuck. I don't want to be dumb playing Clayton. It's so fleeting. I feel the same about a Caprice. Holy oh, shit. The ether. I didn't realize how lazy and greedy I am. Oh, <laughs> I miss <laughs> Caprice, man. Yeah. Hey, professor, is your money okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, if you're just joining us uh, and you did not know, I don't know how you couldn't, but we are running a Kickstarter campaign using all these subclasses that you saw and a lot of these spells and a lot of these vibes. Folk horror at its finest, we think. Uh, the crookedmoon.com, folk horror for 5th edition. Yeah. Uh, 15 subclasses, uh, 13 races, uh, a bunch of items and spells and feats. Um, and we, we are going to be uh, uh, fulfilling towards the end of the following year. But if you are a backer, don't think you can't do what we're doing. Play testing the uh, mechanics and the the story that we're trying to put together. That's soon, very soon. Soon, yes. Uh, this is all coming together very quickly, and it's uh, the most. This was a fucking mm. fun time. Mm -hmm. I had so much fun watching all yeah. of, uh, everyone engage with the mechanics and everything. I was so fucking nervous. Uh, don't fucking tell me about it. And uh, <laughs> I can't wait to share it with y'all. Ooh. But we're not done yet. We're no, not so done. Fun. So back to Crooked Moon at thecrookedmoon.com. Get these adorable plushies. Uh, dice miniatures. If you love Chuckles the Clown, we got a whole Chuckles miniature uh, dice set and enamel pen. And adventure. And Mikey, I just came up with our new slogan, and I'd like you to say it. Yeah. Um, don't be a goon. Back to Crooked Moon. Don't be a goon. Back to Crooked Moon. The Crooked Moon dot com. <laughs> Bring folk horror to your D and D game. The Crooked Moon dot com.